Hey, and welcome to the Sketch Zone Podcast, episode 107. One, I two, am seven. Carlos Gomez, and this with us this week, yo, we have so many wonderful so people. So crowded here. So many wonderful <laughs> And we might even have a couple more, because that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... E3 wrapped up probably about a week and a half ago. And so what we wanted to do is reach out to some of the folks that we knew in the game industry to see what they thought about everything that was announced and everything. So we're going to start with ladies first, Fisa Castellanos from Certain Affinity. Hi, Fisa. Hi, guys. Hey. Hey. Welcome. And back. Back from Blizzard. I don't know if you guys have heard of that place, but uh, <laughs> apparently it's somewhere in California. Uh, Demarcus Holbrook. Glad to be back. Glad to be back, man. For the first time ever. Well, this is like my, for real, like my little brother. I and, but it's like, but this is like catching, this is like catching a unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> it's like weird because all of all of uh, pretty much everyone that that's just like knows me and that's in the creative profession has like within the first 15 episodes <laughs> they have been on this show <laughs> so finally we get the unicorn <laughs> after 106 episodes everyone <laughs> from arcane <laughs> the one, the only, the brownie of my heart. You just stopped talking and you got winded. <laughs> we don't have that long intro. We don't have Jack, so we don't have no uh, our uh, studio yeah. audience is on strike this week. Yeah. Jack is under the weather. However, we also have the trusty. We can call you the Toyota of Sketch Zone because you are just you are reliable <laughs> AF. The Toyota, you know, my little black Toyota Tercel, Charlie B. <laughs> Williams the Yo. third. What's up, everyone? It's another week. <laughs> Glad to be here. That was the weirdest intro ever. I think you call me a Toyota. <laughs> you know. Um, it is real. Right it little, hard, though. Got to make it a little uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to Jack. Hope to see you back next week, Jack. I What I tell you about leaving me with Carlos, because usually those shows are kind of weird. <laughs> you're not here. Yes. Jack is the great equalizer. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, now usually, we have no filter at all. <laughs> usually, yeah, usually I'll I'll go off on something and I just look at Jack and when he's doing this, yeah, he starts looking down. <laughs> I know it's time to stop and change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm really excited. It's like a nice yeah. little reunion show, right, guys? You guys yeah. haven't seen each other in a while, so it's good. I love you guys. Yeah, when yeah. Demarcus was on, uh, we were talking about having a. Sony online reunion party and oh, what man. better way to do it uh, But right after an e3, but hey if you're listening live or even mm-hmm. if you're not listening live And you have a question for anyone on the panel, please feel free to use this sketch zone hotline 408 sketch 8 that's 408 408- Seven five three eight two four eight, and if you are some of those folks that we know in Australia, you know who you are Yeah I like turtles. Zero one one four zero eight seven five three eight two four eight. Operators are standing by. Go ahead and leave us a voicemail. Send us a message. You know how we do. Mm-hmm. Unless you have to do it. Yeah. See, Raj, you see, see what you've been missing out on? 107 episodes, son. <laughs> Lazy. I don't even, I'll be on your ass all night long. You know, you know Raj, he was long. holding it. He was holding this. <laughs> he was all cord uh, before, like, yeah. before record started. Two and a half years doing this. We finally got this kid on the show. <laughs> and what happened two and a half years ago? I had my son. Ah. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. He's, always, he's always trying to outdo. <laughs> you had a podcast. I had a son. You see? <laughs> hey, Charlie. Yeah. How many kids do you have? I have two. How many times have you been on this show? 
107 times. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, here we go. We keep going. Hey, Demarcus, how many kids do you have? I am at two, sir. How many times you been on the show? On the show? <laughs> one <Twice>. time. <laughs> no, this well, is twice, second. Twice, you have what? You have one per kid. <laughs> well, I'm right. God damn it. I'm trying to find an angle for you, man. <laughs> he was trying. <laughs> Hey, Fisa, Fisa, how many kids you you have? Oh, I have one furry one. She has one furry baby. She has a furry baby. <laughs> Fisa's legit been on this show like five, six times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we call her car, kid, because it's expensive. We can talk to you. <laughs> I, I get it. <laughs> Uh, that's we're just happy to have you. We're just happy to have you, Raj. I know. Now that now that now that we we've broken the seal, now we're not going to be able to get rid of you. Um, <laughs> we we will have you back on so we can investigate your profession and and your yeah. your career path and all that stuff. Right. But this is a perfect opportunity to have you on, and we'll be able to talk about gaming and all that good stuff. Um, but Charlie wanted to talk about something real quick. Yeah, so here we Whoa! go. Here oh, we go. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> I go. I knew this was going to be Listen to if you are. Hey. Hey. Uh, wait, wait, where's the apple? Where's the apple? <laughs> I'm right on time. It's nine thirty. You talking uh, about apple, apple. peanut butter? You're, yeah, you're right on time. It's a good thing we started at nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? I thought we started at nine thirty, man. <laughs> no, no, but no. Wait, wait, man. It was man, a great hold up, hold up, hold up, man. Hold up, man. You gotta fall back. Let's, hold up, bro. Let me go over here right quick. Where's the gun? Let's go. Let me go. Let me go. Right I'm, 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 just, I'm just saying, black folks is kind of known for you know, being on the Look. You're on a tour of his house now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There we go. This there it is. Sketch Zone <laughs> officially has no handles. We have lost control. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, Carlos, and Naraj, you can explain this to the viewers at some other time. And Pisa, okay. too. Hey, what's up, y'all? What's going on? Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you that have just logged in, uh, Michael <laughs> Chubb has officially logged in. Mm -hmm. And for the record, does not have a salad. He doesn't have a salad. He has an apple tonight. <laughs> oh, I had that salad that last time. That's right. I had a salad. Oh, yeah, that never ending salad. And you chewed on the salad for two hours. <laughs> Two straight hours. <laughs> like, no, that wasn't a salad for His him. internet was failing. He was still yeah. eating a salad. <laughs> Driving in the car or in drive through Yeah. His TV burnt out. He was still eating a salad. Well, well he got good lighting this time. Remember, That's he true. was like, his part was like dark and scary. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be racist. Is the oh well, you know this this is a new this is a new it's a new spot though. It's a new spot. So. Yeah, yeah, it's moving on up. Nice. <laughs> See what happens. Exactly. You get to go potty inside now. All right, I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be quiet now. I'm gonna be quiet now, so y'all can talk about what you're talking about, and I'll just say what I'm gonna see that 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 great equalizer one I talked about. It's not, uh, <laughs> Jack, where are you? Help. Ah, <laughs> uh, so all right. right. Great entrance, though, Mike. Great entrance. Yeah. Great Mike Chuck action. Welcome Way to, to be show, disruptive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. So, oh, what were you gonna say? All right. So, so this week, or today at least, um, I went over to a, uh, it's like a urban boutique, if you will, custom shoe shop called Notra in the West Loop here in Chicago, and they were doing a really cool. Um, partnership with a nonprofit group. Now, the nonprofit group is called uh, Black Girls Code. And the whole uh, goal for that is to get young black girls to introduce them to technology and coding in, uh, more specifically, uh, to get them into that marketplace. So once they graduate, uh, we can, or they can change the demographic of, of young African American women in the in technology. So the, this boutique, had a good idea because they sell custom shoes, they sell Yeezys, they sell all type of like Air Force Ones and different shoes like that. They did a raffle. So the new, the new Yeezys are coming out, or they're already out, and they have, uh, it's, which, which one is it? It's the uh, zebra print, and they're raffling off some shoes. So anybody knows 
Kanye shoes that go like crazy. People waiting in line for them and stuff Don't like that. Don't they sell for like $1,500? <laughs> yeah, it's high. It's up there. It's up there. A couple hundred dollars. But um, they really hard because they're, they're like, they're like um, limited runs. So they're raffling this off. So what they did, they, they made custom T-shirts and they also made custom hoodies. And they, uh, and they basically allowed you to uh, uh, buy the shirt. All the proceeds went toward Black Girls Code shirt around 30 bucks or so so and then that are the hoodie and they had a unique way of doing it so to promote the whole thing they had stuff on the walls if you go to my instagram instagram.com slash charlie bw3 you see some images from today uh they had just uh the whole uh store set up really cool where they had videos about what they were doing like projected on the wall and then in the middle of the shop they had uh basically a bunch of iPads. So after you went and bought your shirt, you had, in order for you to qualify for the raffle, they made you type uh, 10 lines of code. Um, and this 10 lines of code turned, turned into an algorithm that would give you your, uh, your number for the raffle. So it was just like a cool little play on, uh, on, on the whole theme. And they gave you like a whole like manual that had all the different code and stuff like that. So it was really cool. Just a really cool uh, event they did. It's going till Saturday. And um, it looked like they had a lot of people coming out, you know, finding where their shop is because their shop is fairly new there and because they usually are mostly online. But it was just a really cool way of doing it. And I followed that non for profit. It started out in, uh, the non for profit actually started out in the uh, San Francisco area out by you, Carlos. And now it's pretty much nationwide. And they do a lot of good things uh, for, for youth, industry youth, and whatnot. So I just thought that was a cool thing that they did to. Um, to help raise awareness, you know, yeah. so I was tuning all that out. So that's one interesting thing I did over lunch today. So that's cool. What well, do you guys think about that? Like, probably tricking is the wrong word, but what, uh, uh, motivating? Yeah, it's motivating. They, they're, they're really upfront about Not it. Not you. Also. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk. Let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you guys think, though? It's pretty cool, though. What do you guys think about using using that as motivation to get kids to to start coding? And <laughs> I mean, I I personally think is is great, man. Uh, if you can get <clears throat> a lot of kids to um, look at something outside of uh, you know like sports and drawing, like a lot of the kids that I grew up with, you know, they always think of video games as making characters. You know, they don't really know how many different aspects there are to uh, game development or how that skill transfer uh, even outside of video games, you, you know, learning how to code can be in anything pretty much the, the day that we're in, you know, that's a job of the future. So I think that's great. Mm -hmm. I was, um, I was vibing with you on that because my brother was just out here and uh, he, they live in Toronto and his son is doing this program. Very similar to what you're talking about. Basically they write little short lines of basically a short scripting scripting. And basically he's like, I'm just going to make this fish go through the hole. And it's very, they, I forgot, I need to ask him what that program is, but it's for kids. And I'm watching my, my seven-year-old, you know, script a little character, you know, go, going through a little hole. And basically it's just typing in lines of code. And I had no clue that anything like that existed. So um, it makes sense. And I, I, I applaud that, you know, because that's an angle that um, a lot of kids just have no idea that exists. You know, they just think mm -hmm. you, you didn't make a character or, you know, um, painting, if they know anything about it, usually they go straight to drawing and stuff, which is my angle too, but yeah, yeah that's great, man. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, uh, let cool. me just say this right quick. Uh, I love any kind of program that's gonna get kids involved and everything like that, right. but Yeezys, those shoes are ugly. <laughs> So that is what works for me. <laughs> That's what I was about to tell you. Man. I'm like, the shoes are around. Go ahead. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta Car buy the carry shirt. on. You gonna buy the shirt and just walk, walk out, right? <laughs> I don't need to exactly. Out. Exactly. Shoes look like shoulder pads on feet. Socks. <laughs> 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 socks. I know this is art. It's subjective. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Shoot. No, hey, Fees, what do you think? Carry on. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> no, what I was thinking was I think it's cool that it's outside of school. Like it's not something 
if something out of school is kind of like a prize. So it's mm -hmm. a little bit different for them. It's a situation mm -hmm. where it's a reward. There's a possible reward. I don't know, it's kind of like the lotto, but people play that all the time. And it just, I think it, like as we're saying, it just introduces that to, to those in general that they may not have been exposed to. Just, I mean, all of us think back to how we probably got into this. Thing that we just jumped in. Probably stuff we happened to. Your audio is horrible for the record. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's cool. I think I think one of the other things to make note is like a lot of people are finding out about it so that they can tell their kids about it too. You know, so like like, oh I have a niece that's like they might they might be into it. And and they're like targeting girls too, which is which is the other key part about this whole thing, because of the low demographic of girls. You know, just in 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 the creative industry in terms of technology. So that's another thing to, yeah. to think about too. Yeah, I think that's a really important point that you that you just made. I don't know why, but girls have a tendency to not not just actually playing the game. the 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 participation of girls in gaming is skyrocketing now but even awesome. getting even getting into the development end of things um <clears throat> we can say we can say kids in general that's it because this is chicago inner city and De demarcus when he was on before we talked about this where in the inner city you don't know what's capable or you don't know what's possible so you don't have those coaches you don't have those folks that have been been fighting the fight and breaking into the industry and stuff like that. So to have something like this that shows you this is the logical way to do math to make the little character run through that hole. Mm -hmm. to, to be able to see that you are capable of doing that, um, I think is huge. Not necessarily just for girls, just for inner city <laughs> kids in general. general. Yeah in general because yeah. you can walk down the street here in San Francisco and um, we'll just say it's it's a very limited <laughs> uh, cultural <laughs> very limited cultural yeah. phenomenon we'll say <laughs> um, you know when when <laughs> when the you know and this is you know with the with the um, uh, possibly going, you know, talking too much politics. We can we we can go up to that line though. The 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 fact is, you have a president who wants to stop people from coming in, and you have technology companies that are fighting to have people from oh. over, uh, from from different countries to stay here. Mm. That means that that means that our school system is failing. Mm -hmm. And right. maybe it's because the kids just don't know what's possible. Yeah. 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 I mean, public education is obviously not the way. It's all about charter schools. So, you know, you guys just don't really, you know, you don't know. You don't really know. Yeah. Well, you can even think about I'm joking. Hello. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> well, you can, well, well, on a serious note, though, you can even think about if you take a personal survey just with the people here in terms of. <laughs> If you look back on where you guys have worked, where we all have worked in the industry, in terms of even 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 minorities in gaming in general, I can count on one finger at each studio how many people were of of minority descent, like a black, you know, Hispanic or or whatever. Um, in terms of it just being low numbers, I mean, at, at one okay. point when I started at EA, I was the only black guy, and then we, had, we got one other guy for years, and then I think I had. Yeah, but like I have, I'm not seeing any uh, uh, black females. I've, I've, I have yet to work. I know they're there, but I have yet to work with one in the industry yet. Um, so just taking personal surveys throughout my career, I think this is what is very detrimental for groups like this mm -hmm. to tell the youth that these are possible. Because the way the way one of the representatives was saying was that if we change the mindset now, by the time like 20 years from now. They they hope to change the demographic in terms of like 
it being a lot different, more 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 females, more um, in terms of it being just because they'll understand that oh, I can go do this, like Carlos is saying, you know. So then they'll they won't look the other way in college. Those who make it to college or those who come up through like online, you know, online schooling and all this other stuff. There's a whole bunch of different things they're doing just to raise awareness. So so that it, so that he says a gradual change, but if you, but this this method does work, you know, you know, they have seen success with it. Look, I, I, I have to say this, man. I'm so glad that you made that, uh, that statement, man, because uh, I've been looking for a forum to bring this up. In my experience, um, especially like EA, Sony, and particularly Blizzard, where I'm at now, we get uh, maybe twice a year, we'll get interns to come through and they do a tour of our school, our student <laughs> And I am so glad to see, you know, kids all over the place, you know, getting the opportunity mm -hmm. to see what, what we do behind the walls of Blizzard. But I have to say, man, I it is so rare that I see minorities in that group mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, you know, a Latin, Latino and, you know, African-American. And I even started talking to some of our, um, you know, people of communications. I, d I go down to Detroit every now and again. It's been a while since I've gone, but, you know, and... and but I need to go, I'm going back this year, but talking to different high schools and I wanna see if there's a way that I can pull some of those kids into these interns because I remember when I was, you know, back in the days in the 90s, you know, playing Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, I always wanted to get into game development, but I had no clue mm -hmm. on where to go, who to talk mm -hmm. to and where to start. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody that I spoke with was almost um, trying to encourage me not to do it because they thought it, they didn't want to get my hopes up. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you really, you really need to be brave and get out there and, and, and go out in the wild and not know what you're doing and stumble into hopefully stumble in the right place. So when I see, you know, just, you know, going off of what you said, you know, I, I, I see these walking through, you know, looking at our work and everything and I can't help but, to, um, you know, notice that there's just, there's a lack of, you know, other children that should be seeing what we're doing so they can get some exposure too. So, um, yeah, man, I, I wonder how we can do that, you know, get, you know, get those kids involved. I find, I find it interesting. Um, I, I, I haven't seen what you've seen to Marcus. I, I've actually seen the complete opposite. I mean, I, I went to school, uh, one of my best friends and I actually, he's sitting right there in the center, um, went to art school together. We then worked together. So? Really. And that, yeah, her too. And like, and now that 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 fool's working on Call of Duty, eighteen million. I don't know how many. Thirty-six. Oh. Okay. And, and <laughs> my first my first game job, my art director was black. I work with Spanish folk, um, um, half Mexican folk. And then there's me. There's a bunch of engineers that are Indian. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go to thirty-eight. When I was at thirty-eight, Sony, same thing. There's tons. I mean, I'm not going to say that there are a lot, you know, and I definitely only seen one female black uh, game developer. Yeah. I talked in the entire time. So, Charlie, I do understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I never felt that what you guys are feeling, though. Like, I've, I've always felt like there have been at least some sort of a representation of the minority. And the workers was you, you know, and we read the Sony and, and San Diego and all that. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess I'm not. Let, 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 me be a little, let me be a little more specific. Black mm -hmm. folks. You know, I, I just... <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> call me, call me out the bushes, man. Look, straight up, like, I, I don't... I definitely have seen, um, you know, uh, like, Indian, Asian, you know, like, just that... Yeah, yeah international mix. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Huh? No, just, go ahead. I, I'm just saying, even at 38 Studios, you know... Uh, for the longest, you know, I, I was like, you know, the only black dude. When I met Matt Broom, he was the first art director, that black art director that I had ever seen, you know, you know in my experience. You know, um, aside from that, you know, up until today, like on a blizzard, man, I'm, it's like over 4,000 people and we all know each other. You know, if we're brand new, we don't even know each other yet. You know, it's like, hey, how's it going? You know. Um, but like, you guys do that? Do you guys see each I'm other from across the hallway and give each other that head nod? <laughs> 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 I 
I, I got a story. I'm, I'm saying, I got a story about the head that. nod, but I'll let I'll let the Marcus finish. I, mean, I got a story about up. the head nod, and the Raj knows exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, Look, I'll, I'll, all, all I'm just saying is uh, <laughs> for myself, I, I want to find opportunities to try to get those, you know, more uh, minor, minority black folks and you know Hispanic. And like you said, females. You're you're right. More mm -hmm. more females. Although my last boss was a female, Kari Sutherland. She was amazing, uh, for for my experience. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, go ahead, Chubb. Take it over. Uh, just real quick. First of all, everything that everybody's saying is valid and true. Um, I wanna I wanted to say this real quick. Yeah, Raj, I I, I agree with you. I I know what you're talking about as far as um, you know there in the game industry in general and in tech in general there's mm -hmm. a lot of uh other minorities well represented especially right. asian asian uh from the asian continent we're, you know from that asian area so we're talking indian we're talking yeah. um japanese and all the other stuff um but uh as far as like you guys were saying um demarcus and and uh, charlie the inner and, and carlos the inner city kids simply don't know that it's an option yeah and, and that's what i'm trying to get and at part, and, and part yeah. of the and part of the other thing about it is you know and i think a lot of us don't well let me just say it and then and then we can discuss um it's not cool yet like it's cool mm -hmm. but it's not cool, cool yet. right it's cool to play and it's and a hey, hey brother you you good on them sticks blah, blah blah let's get on that mad let's get on that M nba 2k but it's cool to play mm -hmm. but nobody knows hey it's also you know you could make a career out of this and you can make yeah. some pretty good money out of this yeah. right mm -hmm. so you know raising the awareness to folks um that that really think the only way quote unquote <laughs> out is some of these other avenues pointing out that hey this isn't just this isn't just another option it's another lucrative because that's another thing and I, I don't like to you know feed into the whole materialistic i, I don't want to get into all that but but the point is people uh a lot of the young kids and a lot of young inner city kids want to make that money and so mm -hmm. also letting them know that hey this this is another way uh also to be to to make that cheddar um, yeah mm -hmm. right. so that's 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 the serious so now i'm on to the head nod real quick and then we get back uh <laughs> and naraj knows exactly that's why he's laughing because naraj knows exactly what i'm talking about okay so demarcus yes sir first of all actually you know what i will i will i will talk about the paucity that's a good word right there the paucity oh, of, of black folks in yeah. the industry you know i knew uh I'm we so just nice. lost at treyarch um, slash the paucity. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that that might be, that might be i'll wait i'll wait <laughs> Uh, he said, "Look it up." I wait. I wait. Okay. So, so, um, hey, you know what? Hey, I, I haven't even seen the Instagram photo, and I'm already laughing. But okay, so uh, we literally just lost three, oh, three brothers, really? and oh, uh, it was funny. Oh. It was funny. At one point, at one point, the three brothers that are left. We're all in the hallway, and I said, "Hey, bro, don't go. Hey, listen, we need each other." Anyway, I was just joking. Anyway, so that was one thing. <laughs> Sorry. Back to the head nod. Then we can get back to what's really coming. Back to the head nod. So I'll never forget Raj. Me and me and the Raj. I don't know where we were. We were in the mall somewhere. We were out getting lunch. I think while we were in art school, and yep. we were out getting lunch, and um, and we were we were just walking to wherever the restaurant or whatever, and a walking by and i and i you know i gave him the nod uh by the way have you seen that episode of blackish that was a great episode anyway, yeah, it was a great so, episode. Uh, <laughs> so we need you to so, focus <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry so we walk so we're walking by i give him i give him the i give him the nod and raj goes so disappointed with just with just angst he was like man man we don't have that i said what are you talking about he said i don't never we don't ever i don't see another indian dude and go, hey, what's uh, uh, I don't know, we don't do that. Why can't I want that? I want to have that. 
<laughs> I said, well, start it then, bro. You can do it. Start it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I do. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's no matter where you go, where you go, my wife, my wife pointed out to, the, to me like a couple times, and then a, a couple other people. You don't. It doesn't matter where you are. It can be the guy taking the ticket on the uh, <laughs> on the train, like it happened. To me. Like I'm still, we get, we both get off the train. He's like. So how's your day going today? Oh, I'm doing really good. <laughs> Y'all know each other? No, we don't know each other. Oh, no. right, you have a good one. And now, and now that you see him every day, he's like, oh, your ticket good. You good. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is at Blizzard, man. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's, that happened to me at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> you were luck. I so saw the... This black dude was walking. He was working, and I and I walked up and I did the the nod, and it turned into this full on conversation. My mom goes, "You know him?" I was like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> was, he was just like, he was like, "Wait a minute, you know the nod?" <laughs> <laughs> like, Culturally, that. that was natural. <laughs> Culturally, isn't that interesting? You know, like, you that, man. I never, you never think much of it, you know, huh. because you just think it's like being. Um, being cordial and like like yeah. just really saying hello, but like it's not the same with other people because some people, you know, you walking down the street or you, if you if you commute and you walk a lot, and you pass people all the time. Some people have a real problem with eye contact and like and like saying hello any anyway or just even giving a smile. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, you're looking at me, you know. But it's, yeah. just, it's an interesting thing, you know. And for the record, my white brothers out there, I give you a nice firm handshake. I say, <laughs> I'll meet you opportunity. Let's not start nothing. There won't be nothing. Give you a nice, firm <laughs> so, Quick story. Quick story. So, uh, so, so you guys know I just went to Austin uh, back in February, right? Mm -hmm. And coming from New York and New Jersey, uh, moving to Texas and Austin in particular was night and day. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I mean, forget about the, the demographics and like the, uh, the political climate. Um, I'm actually just talking about <laughs> the the uh, lack of of brown black <laughs> color. Uh, right? uh, and and you know, here's the thing: I never noticed this before ever in my entire life. I grew up in Chicago, I lived in New York, New Jersey. I'm in the West Coast of San Diego. Uh, I was even in North Carolina, right? When when uh, oh yeah 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 down there. Um, and we were in Philly, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, right? I come to Texas, and I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> For the first time, I would love to, love to see you. Like, wait a minute. Wait, I never thought that way. I never thought I'd ever would feel that way. Uh, but um, so we, we enrolled my, my son into this Montessori school, and it's in like a really, really nice area, which we cannot afford to live in. Um, but the school is, you know, portable. Um, so there's literally, I'm not even kidding you, three black parents. Okay. And um, day one, I'm walking, and this, this brother just dropped off his kids. We met eye contact. The nod happened. And, yeah. And, 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 you know, that progressed, that progressed to the next time I saw him, it was like, hey, what's going on? How's it going? You know? And it's hey, for the record, for the record, I want to be the first one. Raj, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I did this and I was like. <laughs> but it progressed, right? It progressed from the nod to the shake to, hey, what's going on? I still don't know this guy's name. He has no idea who I am. We <laughs> know each other, right? And I never thought I would find that camaraderie in that situation. And it's so funny because like, the dude that like, runs the place, um, you know, he opens the door for us. So, you know, he's very friendly. He's like, oh, you know, Gary reminds me of you. Like, I don't know Gary, but, you know, uh, thanks for telling me his name. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's just like, it happened. And it, it was inadvertent, and it just, you know, you, you, put, you put yourself in that situation, or you yeah. put that situation, you kind of seek it out, and you don't realize that you're seeking it out. Mm -hmm. And I think for the first time in my life, I realized how you guys feel. Um, mm -hmm. Because I've I've been around brown folk and we've got like we're like taking over, you know. Yeah. Um, everywhere we go, there's like we're just like all over the place, and uh, it was it was just a really nice feeling. So yeah, I feel like I, I yeah. kind of see where you guys are coming from. I mean, can I talk about can I can I talk about how cool it is to have my complexion? Because <laughs> if I'm hanging out with if I'm hanging out with black folks, I'm you know I fit. Yeah, white folks, I have to pronounce my words properly. 
Indians always give me the hookup because they think I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you do look Indian, don't you? I'm I telling know. you. Like, I, there was this one lady who started talking to me about her daughter. I was like, oh, <laughs> let's do this. Let's yo, do this. Yo, Raj, hold on to that because if the Walking Dead situation happened, you got to go find that those three other families. <laughs> 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 You gotta, gotta fortify. I will find that show. Y'all watch it. You watch the show. You got. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Safety in numbers, man. Yeah. <laughs> cool guys. Yeah. Uh, but but seriously, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going. No, go ahead because I was going to wrap wrap up. So all I was, all yeah. All the, all I was going to say is there's there's other things that um, there's companies like Apple that if you get an iPad. And, and we talked about the uh, the Apple Keynote a couple weeks ago. But if you get an Apple iPad, they have uh, – what's it called? I have it here. Um, it's called Playgrounds. And it's basically um, – it takes you through the stages. It's, it's almost gamifying it, but um, – but – but it's more the technical end of things and you actually have to fill out the different things. Um, you know, they ask you a question, this is what's happening. And then you, you have to type in there, whatever it is that, that, um, that the answer would be for you to progress. <laughs> and then, um, uh, yeah, and it's free on the iPad. So, uh, yeah. If you are, even if you're an adult and you want to learn a little bit more about programming, because it is the future, mm -hmm. uh, actually the present and the future, um, and you have an iPad, go get it. It's called Playgrounds, and it'll teach you oh, how cool. to. It'll teach you, it'll teach you about programming in Objective C, or mm -hmm. I think it's it's uh, I forget what it's called. Um, but Did anyway. you C sharp? No, it's no. It's Objective C, but then Apple actually has this other layer of of programming on top of it that that simplifies Objective C. <clears throat> but if you learn how to program in one language, transferring that to a different language becomes a lot easier. Because um, a for loop is a for loop, and a if then loop is an if then. So all of that stuff. Um, it's just, you know, programming is just taking a look at a problem and solving yeah. it in little baby steps. Mm. And, and honestly, that's, that's all it is. Um, and FISA is trying to get back into this. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> so anyway, um, uh, you know, I, I was thinking uh, just to kind of add what we were talking about earlier about how many different avenues. Right. I, I really, I really do want people to know, you know, just how many um, positions. You know, you, like you, you don't just have to be, you know, in the coding. You know, like right. there's right. tons of like different roles that can bring you into the industry too. If, there, if there's people out there who's watching, right, like, right. going to get in, you know. It's not there's a, project managers. There's everything, you know. There's concept artists. If you like drawing, there's concept art. There's storyboarding. There's yeah. like even even here. Watch this, uh, Demarcus. What do you do? Uh, I'm a level designer. A level so, designer. Yeah. Hey, Chubb, what do you do? I'm a special effects artist. Hey, Raj. What do you do? I'm an animator. Hey Charlie, what do you do? 3 artists, environment artists. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So out of four people here in the actual gaming and game related industry, there's four different four different jobs. Mm -hmm. And I know at least three of you guys graduated with the same exact degree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that that, <laughs> you know, like I graduated with the same degree these guys did, but I went into the programming end of things. Yeah. See, that's awesome. So, yeah, there's you know what else too. Um, there's like uh, voiceover. There's uh, like you said. There's there's like producers. You know, there's people who are good at scheduling who can help. You know that type right. of 
process, you know. Yeah. Um, production coordinators. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, outsourcing managers and you know, yeah. And um, HR. You have the whole yeah. HR route if you, if you, if you go yeah. through that. You know. You know. There's like sound designers and yeah. And um. Musicians, voiceover. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh man, there's cinematographers now, and you know, if you wanted to get into like uh, maybe even like Foley art, Foley sound stuff, there's mm-hmm. so there's a whole thing in audio side of things. I need to think of for that. Yeah. You know. See the the Watch. reason. I, I think this is really interesting because like, like where I'm, where I'm from, Detroit. Like you know, I'm surrounded by all types of folks who were all about like the factory, you know, or um mom and pop jobs and stuff like that and when when you start talking about trying to get into the game industry you you, a lot of people don't know that there's so many different avenues and so many different skill sets do transfer over it's just um you know just applying yourself and knowing who to talk to and stuff like that which is another reason why i love this channel that you guys have right you know because it just peers into the industry so let's take a moment to talk about this channel. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Yeah. Moving on. Punch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and for the record, uh, uh, Fisa, is, she's in the creative end of gaming too, and she is she still designing vehicles? Uh, no, still? senior environments. Environments, oh, come on now. Environment. <laughs> Pump the brakes, kid. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear your sass. Hey. <laughs> yeah, they do. They come back each week. That's probably right. They call me the talent. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the talent. Oh, oh God. God help us. Hey, I so, like myself. Okay. No, hey. So yeah, like as I know, I know for one, as a kid, I. I really didn't know that gaming was possible. I thought cartoons, I thought cartoons were made by magic elves somewhere. I didn't know (laughs) any of this was possible. I'm like legit, like, oh, I can get into it, but, um, but then all of a sudden, you know, kids these days they have exposure to the possibilities of doing things. Yeah. They have, uh, like, I, I just got done talking about being able to program, you know, ramp up your your programming skills on an iPad. We just got done talking about Yeezy. I, I don't, I don't know if I. I'm thinking maybe, <laughs> maybe Kanye sitting just on like a mad stack of gym shoes. Like who did these kids? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the, but the exposure that, that, that people have to games and what's going happening and like the, even the YouTubes and all this stuff that's happening, I think it's, it's a real positive, uh, push towards showing people what's, what's, um, yeah, what's what's out there. What's, what's mm-hmm. capable, the, the capabilities of this stuff. Right. Um, not to mention, just like you know, we we I know I preach on this on the show all the time, where uh, even if you want to work for the Disney's, if you want to work for the DreamWorks, if you want to work for these game companies, all this stuff, as long as you keep working on your own thing, your portfolio is going to grow, and then eventually, when you get to that point, you're going to be able to show off this incredible portfolio, and then work on all these really big projects that you've been dreaming of um so i did all that to say it's it's really cool to be able to see that people's passions have created something like e3 that lets right. even some of these smaller game companies that are working like i know raj has worked on a couple handful of startups um just you know a team of three people and now the ability of this small team of three people to be able to go to something like e3 and showcase what they're what they're doing um raj can you talk about working on a small group of game devs yeah sure um i mean from my from my experience has always been folks that you know 
right? So um, we've had an engineer in LA, we've had an artist in Korea, <laughs> and we had the animator be in New York, you know? And um, somebody's always trying to like wrangle meetings together based off the of timeline, you know, time frames, like, uh, you know, what, what the time difference is and all that mess. But um, no, ultimately it's, it's, it's doable. You just need a little bit of um, help. Uh, for example, we live stream Screenlight and, uh, and the Kickstarter as well, um, which was successful. You know, uh, we, we were able to raise X amount of dollars. And, uh, it basically, yes, allowed, them. Yeah, it basically allowed our, our engineer to quit his so job. What was, that, what was that like being able to lay on a bed of cash? Well, it was a very small amount of cash. <laughs> it, was, it was a twin bed. You put a, you put a handful of nickels on the floor and roll the run on that? <laughs> yeah, basically, if you, if you took a, you took a twin and removed the maybe front. even a pillow of cash. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was a sheet for the pillow. That's what it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> because you know that's the one thing they don't tell you, right? Kickstarter will say, okay, you got you got 175 grand. Say that's what you made, right? And it was it was perfect. You 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 got what you needed, but then. Um, depending on how folks pay, right? whether it's Visa, MasterCard, or through Amazon Pay, they all get a cut. Um, and then after after all that's left over, you find yourself, oh, I don't have a ton of cash. Oh, and, and let's not forget about the people that decided last minute, oh, you know what, I don't want to do this, and we pull out. So you think you've got X, but you really well, don't then, And then X. we can talk about the people whose credit cards oh, it go wow. through. And then, yeah, the oh, credit cards wow. go through. Yeah. So it'll stay successful. It'll say you've got 170, but you might only have 60, right? Mm. And uh, that is legit. I will tell you that right now. <laughs> and so um, that's tough. So then you start trying to figure out how, how do we how do we do this? Uh, people start, you know, saying, okay, fine, you know, we'll do it. So it'll be a passion project. We're not gonna we're not gonna take any cash for this. We're gonna hope that at the end everything works out, you know. Um, but it's cool. You're making games, you know, uh, right. and, and, and not just E3. There's there's Rooster Teeth. There's you know GDC. There's PAX uh, all over the country. Yeah. Um, some are more accessible than others. Um, and uh, and Austin, Austin is a great city. And you see it crazy. There's tons mm. of like meetups and group ups, and uh, it's pretty cool. So um, yeah, if, if you've got the passion, if you've got the know how, you know, you you make it work. Right. Yeah. How important do you guys think it is for uh, people interested in games and gaming and breaking into the game industry? How, how important do you guys think it is to, to go to something like E3? Uh, I, I'm going to jump in on that because I have to actually jump off. Uh, so let me answer which you guys the best. Uh, E3, first of all, first of all, this is... 2017 was the first year it was open to the public. To the public, yeah. Folks mm -hmm. could buy tickets to go. Those sold out very quickly. But the point is, um, this was the first year that the open public open to the public. Um, to be honest, I I don't know. I would say GDC would be a more uh, beneficial conference to go to for someone interested in getting into the entertainment or getting into the video game industry because GDC is literally a learning and networking conference. And what's GDC? And it's a, say again? For those folks that don't know, what's GDC, GDC stand for? That is the uh, Game Developers Conference. It's held in San Francisco every year. They also now added a VR DC, Virtual Reality Developers Conference, mm -hmm. um, a couple other developer conferences as well. But you can go to gdconf.com, I believe it is. It might, it might be .org. You can check me on that. that um, yeah. And there's so, many, there's so many resources there for people mm -hmm. that want to get into the game industry. Uh, but to answer the question more succinctly, I, I would say that that would be the premier conference to go to if you want to if you're going to choose between e3 and any <laughs> and other one, i would say gdc by far um e3 um i know you guys are going to continue talking about e3 let me just give my two cents and then i'll say peace out for me 
E3, uh, having been in the industry now since, what, 99, um, I can see everything I want to see much better online than at the show. Mm -hmm. At the show is more about catching up with folks if they're, if they're there, people that I've used to work with or people that I have a relationship with that are now not, that I'm not working with but are still in the industry. Being able to catch up with them face to face, that's what E3 represents to me now more than going to see announcements or see games or anything like that because it's, mm -hmm. number one, it's very crowded and number two, um, because of the crowds, it's even hard to get up. I, I've, I've given up trying to play games at E3 like 10 years ago. Like mm -hmm. the, the lines are crazy and all kind of stuff. But, um, so but is with, it safe you know, to the say internet now and everything, you can see everything. Yeah. Saying I'm an old laundry veteran. <laughs> <laughs> That's a message of you and I have always worked E3. We never really had time to enjoy it. This is true. This is true. This is true. But, um, yeah, and there is a difference between attending and working it. But um, suffice to say, nowadays, I can see everything I want to see and more online. I, I'll, I'll leave E3, go look online, and be like, oh, that was there? I had no idea. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll share this last thing, and then I'll hop off Cuphead, because I know we're going to talk about Cuphead. You guys are going to talk about Cuphead. Yep. That is one, sh one game that I did get to see in person last year and got to talk and we're talking about indie development these are this was started by two guys now the, the team has grown and everything since since they've been um fun and everything like that but i got to talk to one of the guys one of the two guys that created that started it. and That's i got to play it a little bit crazy. talk to him and it was just like i just got to get him this time and tell him hey man keep going give him some encouragement and give him just affirmation that man what you're making is awesome and mm -hmm. keep going and so that's another cool thing about E3 and about them opening up uh, wider avenues to indie developers as well. Because um, at those shows, you get to talk to the actual people that are making the game <laughs> and, uh, mm -hmm. and give them your appreciation and your feedback and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So that's, that's, that's value. But also, again, at GDC, you're going to get that value and then some. Yeah. yeah. So cool. anyway, All right, hey, y'all, I got to cool. go. It's been great. Love y'all. Uh, everybody watching, keep tuning in to Sketch Zone because you're going to get great information and some foolishness along the way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Probably, probably way it. more foolishness. <laughs> yeah, guys. Exactly. Thanks Love for it. stopping by. Thanks for stopping by, Mike. Mike, up, guys? Thanks. Yay. Dude, this budget, <laughs> the budget for sound is. Yeah, just, I love it, right? Oh, we got to do a Kickstarter just for sound. He's gonna tell Google to give us the sound panel back. So at least <laughs> is it not there anymore? No, my poor man's sound panel when uh, Jack is not here is not there. I've been searching for it the whole time. Oh, yeah. They don't have it there. They took it out. They said, yeah, dude. It says work in progress. Hot trash. <laughs> oh my goodness. Cool. Hot trash. And I think I think that was uh, one of the important things that he did say was do your research before you go to one of these things know what you <laughs> want to get out of these conferences and then ask around uh you can even you know use a schedule and hotline if you have any questions as far as this stuff goes because even if we don't know the answer we know people who might and i think the gem that mike dropped was if you want to if you want to network and you want to break into the the game industry the game developer conferences is the place to go whereas e3 <clears throat> i would imagine is probably a lot like what san diego comic-con is where where it used to be where you can go and and check out comic books and stuff and now it's more of a marketing event and yeah so yeah because historically if you think about it historically e3 has only been basically open to other developers and the press. So it was it was the one time of the year for all the different uh, developers in the world, if you will, to come and you know show off their stuff. It's, it's the big dog and pony show for the industry to show out what the new what's new in terms of technology with the consoles that are coming out from the big three, as well as what's new from all the other studios. That are coming out. So it was there. There's there's meetings that are, are happening, but they're higher up meetings between publishers, you know, and 
us artists and devs are, you know, meeting with uh, friends of old, you know, and then you were talking to press and stuff like that. And sometimes you get to go to E3 and like Naraj said, what you work, what you work a booth and mm -hmm. you're that and you're that booth person <laughs> and you have you have your set time to be there. Well, and you're you're interacting with the public. Baby. <laughs> you watch the move, babe. <laughs> you gotta go. We should touch you a little. Demarcus, not that. <laughs> Stand here and wear this T-shirt. Another time. <laughs> I, I, I like, I like, I like Demarcus. Said, That's my old life. I am not that. <laughs> I used to enjoy old, it for me just by residual, like just caught up in the wake of Demarcus. <laughs> it just, you're just like, wow, is this really happening? Yes, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I got it. You know what's up? Go ahead. Chubb, Chubb said it like perfectly, though, man. Uh, E3 has always been for me, especially the last, like you said, five, five, ten years, you know, has been just kind of a reunion to see all of your fellow devs that you just worked with through the years. And it, it's almost impossible if I was a, a new guy and wanted to get an industry um, to actually talk to someone who would actually help you out. I mean, it does happen because they have those um, after parties all over the place. You know, so if you're really trying, GDC definitely is the place to go yeah. to pass a business card around or two. But um, now it really is kind of like, um, like you said, it's set up for, you know, the me you know media and just, they're, they're already prepared for people not knowing, you know, <laughs> it's, it's set up literally just to see stuff, you know, and you're not really talking to people exactly who will who could actually get you in like compared to gdc yeah yeah, yeah gdc is what is is what uh SIGGRAPH is for people who want to get into you know <laughs> animation and film and stuff like that and that's the one the first ones i went to and i think we've talked about that on the show i mean carlos went to the one two years ago and that was what that one felt like where it wasn't not a3 but it was more of a networking let's talk to both uh people who are making the software that we use as well as people who are using it as well as the studios. It's a big, huge networking thing, you know, and you're, mm -hmm. you're going there to learn just like a GDC. I think you, there's classes and stuff at GDC. Don't quote me because I've, I've been, but like, I think there is like different classes and panels that you can go to. Mm -hmm. And those are the other best parts about it. I'm uh, a lot of the panels I went to at SIGGRAPH uh, where I went was, I went to a couple of Blizzard panels that were really, really interesting and really good. All of, all of the Disney ones were really good and they're very insightful. I mean, for those of you guys, like Marcus, you'll like this one. Um, they even had a panel, which I told Carlos was like rare. They had a panel for uh, Big Hero 6. Oh, just, wow. just just about environment. Oh, wow. Just about, just about the environment department. That's, that's like, awesome. when, when do you hear about that for film, you know? Yeah, you don't, you know yeah. So, so yeah. like, I was like. Every I, week, Charlie, every week. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I talked Carlos's head off that night. I was like, yo, this is crazy. I, I come into the panel like a normal panel, you know, like, okay, cool, sit down. And then I'm like, wait a minute. He's what? Oh, it's like seeing a unicorn, <laughs> you know, because they don't ever talk about it, don't, especially with film, you know? It's yes. more so like characters and animation. Yeah. Uh, and stuff. I'm like, there's a huge department. Talk about surfacing or something. Yeah. So it was cool. So GDC's that place to do that for the game for, for, for if you want to go into games because you'll have people that want to talk to you and then um if you want to do like animation and like work for nickelodeon all those other things carlos you've been to a different conference that's more similar to smaller but it's but it has that more focus of that and that was the one out in is it Anaheim? That, was, that was ctn in burbank in burbank yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff, right? um, well, it's, it's getting there it's getting there yeah. but they was trying to keep it small but it's getting there yeah it's, it's not as big as SIGGRAPH, yeah, but it's cool, that's, though. It's really that's, good. Real, that's a really good one for, say, 2D artists and stuff. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's mm -hmm. all my New York friends that are all, like, illustrators and graphic designers and mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful painters, um, they all went to CTF, and that's where they got like, their, their uh, portfolios looked at. And stuff. Hey, Carlos, you said you had a ball, right? That was, that was, that was like, it was, you, it was a couple people for the show, yeah. yeah. It was a blast. Wow. Yeah. I was I was definitely in my amongst my people. My people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, oh, and 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 another one that I haven't even said, haven't talked about yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to Adobe Max this year. 
Now, now, Adobe, what is Adobe Max for people who it's don't just, know about that one? That was a flagship. Adobe Max is just basically Adobe showing off all their. It's the you know how you know how Google has their I/O, mm -hmm. uh, Apple has their WWDC, Facebook has F8, Adobe has Adobe Max. So they'll be they'll be showing off all of the new stuff that they've been working on. Um, um, cool. Yeah. Wait, yeah. where where is that going to be at? That one's going to be in Vegas. Ah, nice. Yeah. Do they do? Do they do panels and like and like uh, things you go to too? Yeah. So, so, so all day thing, like you can be like learning all yeah. day. Then. Yeah, I'm gonna be out there for three days. The whole thing from beginning to end, because you know how usually conferences that you go to will have one or two days of like extra classes and stuff that you can go to. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking about doing doing that, but you know, dead ain't man out of cash. So right, right. <laughs> Yeah, chopping it down to three days. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. That's that that was on my bucket list. Um, That's cool. I wanted to go do that. Uh, um, I'll, just, I'll just talk about the conferences. Like I was telling you guys earlier about uh, BlizzCon. And uh, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of shaking in my boots because I haven't I haven't done this before. But yeah, the BlizzCon conference coming up um, uh, this November. Um, I'll be doing um, a level design. Um, you know, showing talking to the audience like a demo on how how we build levels and stuff like oh. that. Oh, so it's going to be you're in the main live. stage. Live. Yeah, I think, I think we're live. on main stage live. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> nice. Well, it's going to yeah, be good times. Nervous, <laughs> be good. You had to practice. Uh, I, I yeah. have. A, I hey, let me break the news to you. Let me break the news to you. You're going to think you're going to be ready. All right. <laughs> there you go. Hey, look, you look out on I that did, crowd. Yeah. I did a talk once. They're oh. like, oh, no, it's just going to be however many people. I was like, all right, cool. I walked out. There was like 500 people. Oh, don't even tell me that. Uh, I was like, yeah. what the? You're going to have that little <laughs> mic next to his mouth. Like, yeah. yeah. Gonna yeah. Tell you, hey, all I'm going to tell you is get to that first joke as fast as you can. <laughs> before, I, before I become the joke, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah my, um, and we don't know exactly how we're going to set it up. I um. I know I'm going to be with my boy uh, Victor, and basically we're just—I think we're going to have a moderator, someone in between, kind of talking to the audience. That that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's going to help. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm going to focus on maybe like building a like a basic POI and like a, a co nice composition, while my other buddy, my buddy, is going to focus on the way we handle terrain sculpting and stuff like that. We don't. We 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 got to put it together, but I do know, you know. With all these conferences coming up, I'm just every time I hear a conference, I'm like, oh shoot, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, your year is like going by quick, like months are turning into weeks. <laughs> yeah. you're, like, you're like, what? Summer's almost done. Oh no. Right. <laughs> so after, the, after the conference, we'll have to do the, I'll have to appear on your show again so you guys can brief mm -hmm. me whether. It went good or bad. He'll, he'll come back and be like December. And he's like, Man, I didn't even feel like I had a year. Like the way <laughs> it was nice days, and I was getting upset because I knew that like I had less than two months left. Less than <laughs> yeah. Well, I know. I know. I, I better nail it, or I'm be asking you guys for a job. <laughs> uh, you'll be fine. You'll be good. You'll be fine, dude. Schedule is not hiring. <laughs> Oh, hang on, Fisa. Fisa back. Fisa? Back. Yeah. Can't you see my picture? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, are they going to live broadcast that your your uh, your demo that you're going to do at BlizzCon? Uh, yes. Um, from what I'm hearing, it's going to be live. Uh, but we um, they're still trying to work out the kinks. Um, so I, I'm not sure exactly. That's just been kind of like the hearsay. But they're they're still figuring figuring stuff out. You know the the detail. The market. So you got. So you, got you the, mean. So you mean even more people are gonna be watching it. <laughs> the market. We gotta figure out a system. So you gotta have your phone in your pocket. Right. And and like just put it on vibrate. I'm oh, have right. to do some kind of Morse code. So if I yeah. <laughs> so if I text you twice, I'm good. You're killing it. You're doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. If I, if I text you four times, I'm oh, like. That means get your stop. resume ready. Right. right. No, no, that, means, off the stage. that means stop saying um. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Marcus, record, hang on. I want to. I want to take a second to mm -hmm. to give Demarcus props for his Mr. Robot webcam setup. 
<laughs> if you guys have ever watched Mr. Robot, that's exactly how they pull off the show. You you got you got to fill me in, Mr. Robot. What do you mean? You mean just, that look at, just look at your screen, and that's how pretty much the entire show of Mr. Robot was shot. It's like because because <laughs> your your camera's facing right, and you're like way to the left. Oh, <laughs> like they. If you go through and watch Mr. Robot, they it's they have like show the, too. they have the environment that's just really huge, and then the main character, even it's though like in the corners, right here, <laughs> even though he's talking, is like this little head right over here. <laughs> like, right. So you want? I guess you want me to focus down there. I got. I got. <laughs> my my office is teeny tiny, so I'm like trying to squeeze into this little space. It's all those muscles. It's all those muscles. That's what right. <laughs> Roger talked about earlier. <laughs> you guys used to be behind that booth. <laughs> Muscle <laughs> uh, Got no room. <laughs> too good. All right. So now that we, we've uh, we've talked about all the different kinds of cons and stuff, what were some of the highlights? Uh, for E3, and I know I have a few things that I wanted to, to follow up on with you guys, but Mike kind of touched on the one that I wanted to talk yeah, he, about was yeah, he, he jumped the gun. He jumped the gun for you. It's okay. He needed to get yeah. He, he didn't get to get in there and. But um, have you guys have you guys been following Cuphead and the progress of it or anything? Yeah, yeah. I, I also met the. Um, I guess are they brothers or I know they were like. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. One of the two heads. I I met them. You know, like a, I think it was like two E3s ago. They were demoing um, demoing the game, and I got a chance to play it, and you know, talk to them, and you know, they were just super excited. And I did what Mike said. You know, I was let them know how excited I was about how their hard work and you know, to give them encouragement. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm really pumped about that. Yeah, I heard it's like a labor of love, like the, those those things, because they've been having little featurettes uh, through like through like Unity and a couple other a, a couple other things every once in a while. I think they had a little behind the scenes once, but yo, you realize like the way they have to draw those uh draw yeah. the animations and stuff like that. Maybe and I, and Raj, have you seen have you seen Cuphead? I have, because you're, you're an animator, right? So I was like, man, like. It must have took them a couple couple years because if they're drawing it old school style, like yeah, how many how many little blue bins do you think they fill up? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you'll be surprised. You know, if they're using Unity, like I think they are. There's like a ton of cool apps and plugins that they can use. There's Pop 2D. There's also uh, Spine. I don't know if you ever used. That's a really good one. Spine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. So. Um, you don't know if it's old school sprite or if they're using some of this cool new stuff, which kind of helps. Like it has like IK, it has like collision and physics and mesh deformation. So I, regardless of what they're using, it looks freaking beautiful to me. But that's just it, Raj. They're supposedly all of drawing. their animation is supposedly being drawn on paper, painted like, on paper. Yeah, they paint it like watercolor. Painted on paper, and then brought into the game. Yeah, and that engine. Yeah. I want to. I want to. Yeah. I want to give him my money just because of that. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Roger's face is great. He was like, "What?" <laughs> it's, it's like every time I see one of those stop motion movies, I'm like, "You guys are statistic fools." I will give you my money because, you know, you killed yourself making this. You know. <laughs> yeah. And all you folks out there talking about, oh, my carpal tunnel. These folks have been drawing every, <laughs> <laughs> every little. Man, I, you know, I just they all got their surgeries. <laughs> Yeah, I just, yeah, I just don't, don't, yeah, yeah. Now they're all mechanical. That, that that bowling wrist brace thing that yeah. they. <laughs> that, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out like how long. Well, they they gave a date though. I think they did they give a date. Yeah, was it yeah. September 29th? Thank you, thank you. September 29th, <laughs> you said. Yeah. yeah. I heard they gave it hard. Too. Like, really he said, hard. "I don't know, I don't know what you did, <laughs> but your mic is like perfect now." <laughs> I don't want to yeah. on my phone. I'm on that. I'm on my luxurious uh, webcam. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about that. Hey kids, hey yeah. kids, if you're listening, if you can hear my voice, if you ever go to a, an electronics store and spend twenty dollars on a web camera, send me the receipt with your address so I can fly to where you are and beat the hell out of you with it. <laughs> or are you coming over? <laughs> Look at. <laughs> 
<laughs> is that all it took to you to have you come visit? <laughs> um, but no, uh, it's good to have you back. Um, so yeah, so Cuphead is coming out September. What? Yep. 29. That's what it said 29. on the website I just looked at. Is that going to be, is that a console game or is that like a uh, Xbox. Xbox? Xbox One. And Are they exclusive? I think they're exclusive, yeah. Oh, <laughs> what, I heard, what I heard the rumor mill is that both of these consoles are now competing to have indie exclusive games. Oh, so for these indie guys, that's that's pretty cool because you know they're getting money to be exclusive on certain consoles. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's weird. Indie being exclusive, that's, that's so yeah. weird. It's like flip flop, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, indie developers are exclusive. Like I was just asking somebody because remember they did the big push for indie developers and all that good stuff like two years ago, and both of the big two had a slew of indie guys on stage. And I was wondering, and it's good to see that they were doing some uh, uh, exclusivity, like you're saying now, because at least they're not totally forgot about them and, and treat them like a fad, <laughs> you know, like a like a passing fad of like, oh, we we love indies also. So that's kind of that's kind of interesting, the exclusivity thing. Is it like timed? I wonder if it's gonna come out on um, PlayStation ever or PC. So is it PC and Xbox or just Xbox? Xbox. Okay. There's cool. another one that I saw that looks really good. It's called The Last Night. Did you guys see that one? It's kind of Blade Runner looking, but it's a... Yeah, yeah. is it Last Night? Awesome. What is it called again? Huh? What is it called again? The Last Night. Yeah. Have you seen this one, Carlos? Night as in day and night or night yeah. as in... Day and night. Yeah, day and night. So write that down, Carlos, because you're going to want to watch that after the show. It's It's like... Uh, what would you call it? Like, it's like pixel art, right? It's like yeah, it's uh, pixel art, but it's in a, it's three D and it looks Blade Runner like. Huh. Like this is the best looking pixel art I've ever seen. Like, like wind is flying and dusted particles are flying up and stuff like that. Like the dude has like a leather jacket. But yeah, it looks, yeah, it's really cool. It's old school. Yeah, we should have some gameplay. Like it, it, it's a trailer that shows a little bit of everything, but it doesn't show like gameplay. Yeah, it shows like the cinematic playing. stuff. Yeah. Did you guys ever play uh, old school Lucas Starks like um, Indiana Jones, Fate of Atlantis? Like those old yeah, mm -hmm. that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of like that classic. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna go here, and uh, it's just it's beautiful. Carlos, yeah. you gotta check it out. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Shadow my, runs. My question to you. My too. question to you is this: mm -hmm. with with Facebook, Apple, Window, uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, Google, everyone is coming out with VR. Why in God's name are we doing pixel art games? See, see, you haven't seen this one. Yeah, you got to see this game. It looks so. They kind of like do a play. This is why I love Carlos because, like, next week I'm going to roast him once he sees it because he's going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be awesome. So stay hey, tuned. For the record, Charlie, <laughs> I, I, sometimes I have to play devil's advocate just to keep the conversation going. I'm a pro at this. So. Yeah. Have you seen it, though? No, not yet, but I will. <laughs> Probably would have seen it by now. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, sir? You know what, though? You, that that <laughs> Nintendo Classic, that little console, that thing, you can't find it anywhere. I mean, I think yeah, it's sold it's, out quick, right? They stop making it. They stop making it. Yeah, there's, well, there's like a resurgence of people wanting to see those yeah. kind of games. Yeah, I think there's, I think there's a, um, a look for everybody. There's a style for everybody. And it's mad niche, right? But mm -hmm. if, if you've got the money or if you've got the time or the passion, I don't think games have to have, like, next-gen this, VR that. You know, it could be freaking Minecraft is a billion-dollar thing. Bought. Yeah, he's got like this ridiculous McMansion. And he's weird. Yeah, he's crazy. He's like, oh, he's, yeah, right? Have you seen his? I, but I his know. mansion is really weird and pixelated. <laughs> he's got one. <laughs> Yo, have you seen his Instagram? Like, he's an interesting dude. Like, in his thought process and stuff. But it's crazy because that game, like, yeah. I've seen a whole replica of the Starship Enterprise, like, full scale. And I'm yeah. like, <laughs> it's like crazy that it, somebody made those things in my thing. Yeah. I saw that shit, but like, I don't want to play this. But 
there's a billion people that did it, you know? Yeah. That thing is it's, so it's the kids. It's the kids who play it, which is yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's true. Because at, at the end of the day, the gameplay is kind of interesting. If it, were, if it was a game that we would play in terms of, like, normal, your average next-gen game, that they still mm-hmm. haven't been able to really capture, even with the whole zombie craze that they have on Steam and stuff like that, of, like, surviving, the survival horror type stuff, where you're surviving or, like, all you have is a, a stick and you need to survive. Uh-huh. Minecraft does that in the simplest way of, like, okay, cool, it's going to be dark soon. You need to make yourself a house. Yeah. Because you should just get inside, right? Like, I, yeah. I like the premise, because, like, I, from that part that I've seen people play, they're like, yo, you need to hurry up, you burning daylight. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't understand what this game is, but, like, kids love it, and then they get yeah. into this whole intricate farming system and, like, tunneling, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff. It's like, but, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy. You're right. Something for everyone. Speaking of consoles and stuff like that, mm-hmm. Uh, Microsoft announced the Xbox X. Xbox One X. Yeah. Xbox One X. How you like that name? <laughs> Are they running out of names? I don't that, think they care. I don't understand. Like George Foreman named all his kids George. George. Yeah. <laughs> Georgina. Georgina. George X. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand the marketing standpoint of it, but like, because like they, you have your budget box and then you have your, your, your elite one that's supposed to keep up with like beast machines like mine but it won't but like yeah xbox one x they got crucified on it a little bit but it's good it's uh got pretty good specs though you know what's uh what's what's the big deal so xbox went the route of which i which and we can talk about this and i don't i can want to get fisa's and uh roger's um take on it but Xbox went the route which a lot, with the other, a lot of other systems did, but with this new version, they kind of went the route of having legitimate true 4K rather than go the route of have legitimate 60 frames per second. But I, I understand why they did that because hmm. if you see about all these new games that are coming out, all the big ones, all the new games, the anthems, all the other ones, like you know they're like being reported they're going to be running at 30 frames a second or whatever and not they're not, not going to be at a native 60 60 frames a second but mm-hmm. when you have two budget boxes where one costs 500 and the other one costs what's the other one the Xbox one s is 3 300 300, 300. Mm-hmm. well you know your Xbox one s is like the closest thing you have to a PC it has a water cooled system in it it's really it's really good or whatever there's no way you're going to be running like Anthem at 60 frames a second on the Xbox One S. So they have to parry, parry it and like make it middle of the road where both systems can run both games that come out. So they went, so Xbox went the whole 4K route. So they're playing to the TV market again of like true 4K, you know, faster, faster system. Um, we'll give you that fidelity. And that's kind of what they played it up to, if you want to put it in a nutshell, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the big deal about it. Same thing with the PlayStation Pro and stuff like that. It's like getting that native resolution up up higher. Not necessarily the frame rate, though, you know? Because then you would have, like, games that would work awesome on the Xbox One X, but not awesome on, you know, you know the the one step down just because of, like, hardware. You know, that's the biggest thing with consoles is, like, you know, hardware and mm-hmm. what, it, what you can run. Because, you know, the PC you can throw in, like, you know... The best graphics card, more RAM, you know, and everything, you know, really nice, you know, monitor and all that good stuff. So Xbox is trying to fill that niche a little bit, but at the same time, stay true to the console market. Roger, are you getting one? Um, I'm not getting a console until I can trust my son to uh, not destroy everything I own. (laughs) (laughs) Daddy, look, water. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) I, I I love the guy. But man, I don't trust him to save my life. Um, it's water cooled. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll play. You know, they've got all the consoles, so I'm just I'll play that. Yeah. I, work. <laughs> I have a backlog of Steam games, and then I also want to get a bunch of the exclusives on the PlayStation. But I, I mean, I haven't played Last of Us. I haven't played any of the. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. You got a little daunting task. What about you, Fisa? What do you think about the new consoles? I think um, I'm always hesitant because when they come out, there's so many uh, problems with them. Right. Uh, 
we're not making anything at, for them right now. So it was interesting to me to see these things coming out. And because usually when these consoles come out, we're already making games for them and we've already heard of them. So it was right. interesting to me to see this come out. I'd never, I'd never heard of it before. It was surprising to me. But um, mm -hmm. the 4K, man, when I was look, just looking online at Forza, it <laughs> looks great. Right. Right. There is, want to buy a 4K TV. I don't know if that's what they're trying to do, but there it is. Yeah. It's my question. Right? My question is this: You know, when you first get a super HD TV and you watch the news and you realize, <laughs> yes, what those people look like, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, and you kind of want to go back to SD. <laughs> Mommy, she's scary. Lily's scary. Just like it's not for HD. Just like just like the dude on on ESPN, he passed away I think last year. But his eyes, uh, in SD, he was normal looking guy. But <laughs> you, oh, you he said looked like he was high AF all the time. <laughs> it's yeah. weird. Yeah, we had this guy. The weatherman in Philly, you can see all the pores just like, <laughs> yeah. and you see that there, bro. He, really, he tans, yeah. he goes in a tanner, like, but he looks oh. orange. And Wait, he, was no. five, he was five before the HD, you know. <laughs> <laughs> for that newscaster, she was young forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they see it, you're like, Wait a minute, <laughs> every bit of like, who's grandma? Five. Where are you? <laughs> I liked it when uh, me and my uh, girlfriend, when I was still living in LA, we would watch the Oscars and we'd be like looking at Salma Hayek like up close and going, oh, she's like 48. And you're like looking at her and you're like, oh, okay, we still got time. <laughs> still got time. <laughs> now they do not lie. Right? I know. Um, are games capable of... of looking that good are we are we over engineering these boxes to to deliver on something that's not realistic i think they can be i mean right now yeah. at work we're like we're like looking at stuff as far as like lighting goes where you have to take a screenshot and then reset it and then take another screenshot and you have to like go back and forth between them several times just to figure out the differences between them and what you like about one and the other. I mean, it's like so minute, some of the stuff mm -hmm. we're doing. Yeah, you throw the power at it, it, it can definitely do it. The things like, with the VR stuff that we're doing at work, um, I, I am a big proponent of real-time rendering at this point now. And I will like, I will, I wish there was a contest, I really do. Because I will, I will use image-based lighting and in Unreal Four, and I will, I will legit go against anybody with V-Ray or anything else, and then produce the same image that looks just as good. And that's kind of where we're at this point. I finally convinced my my boss after showing him some like tests that we've done, and then if you get into photogrammetry and all this other stuff, you can totally, from a visualization standpoint, architectural rendering, um, cinematic type stuff. If you can light it, you can make it look really, really good. So the power is there. And that's the whole thing of like why they felt they need to make like an Xbox One X. Mm -hmm. Because the power is there in those in those um in those systems. Even for if you even if you go down to a system like Unity, um, which is um partnering with Otoy, which is the guys who make Octane. So now it, you know, later this year you're gonna have a game engine that has a renderer like what we would know mental ray to be or uh, V-Ray to be um, back in the day with Max, that's connected to a renderer. And then there's a talk of last week that came out that Unreal at some conference in Europe, um, there was a uh, chaos group was talking to a group of, group of developers and artists. And those are the guys who make V-Ray and they had a, um, presentation about how they're integrating V-Ray into Unreal, oh, you know, man. and then so I don't think that shit that was supposed to come out because the pictures that came out were somebody taking pictures in the audience of the screen, uh -huh. you know, of the of the uh, presentation. But you know, we were one, you know, us guys who do, who do VR and do and do more of that uh, 
that hybrid type of thing where uh, visualization plus the uh, VR and all that good stuff. We were wondering what would be uh, Unreal's response if Unity went to go and grab the renderer to put in, you know, because it looked amazing. You know, you can grab something off the Unity store in that build uh, and throw it through Octane, and it looked like you rendered it in Maya or, or Max. With Oct- you know, mm-hmm. so it looked like they, I think they took uh, the famous, there's a famous short film from the guy who does uh, the District 9. Okay. It, it, it wasn't him, it was one guy who worked on that, but it looked like there was a short film that was on Vimeo circulating like last year. Uh, they had that running in Unity and it looked every bit of like not a game engine, you know? So it's it's very interesting, you know, that, you know, they're adding these offline renders, putting them into these game engines and it's, it's great because I don't have to wait to render. You know, they had the whole set of that of that short in in Unity, or just like a prop. No, they had they had one of the scenes. They had like one or two of the scenes. I'll link you the. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool to see. Because it was the yeah, because we use Unity and we use Unreal at work, and like uh, the biggest thing that like <laughs> the that my boss says now is that when we want to make something look amazing, we use Unreal just from the just because that a lot of the clients want to see that, but. A lot of our like experience stuff we do, the interactive stuff we do in Unity. So uh, to have Octane for free, you know, in Unity, and it's gonna you don't have to pay extra. It's just gonna be with the next version of Unity. Uh, is great. Like he said, like literally in the in the in the talk in the keynote, they grabbed a random object which I've seen before on the Unity store, threw it into Unity, and then turned on Octane. And that little low res game object looked a hundred hundred times better than what it normally does. So imagine if you actually model something, you know, you know that's like high poly on purpose, you know, for that you can't you won't be able to tell the difference. Like Flappy Birds, right? <laughs> I will model the crap out of Flappy Birds and put some <laughs> fur on it, <laughs> fur cards. <laughs> I, I, I argue, I argue that the potential is there, but I think we're still a ways out. Like I feel like. Something is going to have to give. We're going to have to sacrifice either frames per second, uh, gameplay, like the depth that you get right now, uh, the number of co-op, you know, opportunities you have right now might be lessened. Um, yeah. You know, how many characters in that kind of thing? I I feel like if you're going to go max resolution 4K, something's got to give right now. Right. Um, right. Right, what I was talking about more for cinematic real time, so that's for like cutscenes and all that good stuff. Oh, but for you, yeah, for the for the Xbox One X and stuff like that, that going that 4K route instead of going the whole everybody can do 60 frames a second route, you know, like I wonder, I wonder what's the good trade off, and maybe you can talk about that now with that, if, and what would give then? Because I mean, obviously, you know, the Call of Duty stuff that they run in, they run in 60 frames and stuff like that. But even and and you know you can argue that like we watch movies and stuff like that and thirty frames and stuff like that. So I mean I thought Anthem looked really good. And, you know that's gonna be mm-hmm. they said that's gonna be thirty frames. We we saw Destiny look really good. That's gonna be thirty frames still. So I don't know if it's just us as a culture hoarding like oh we need we need more we need more and when we, maybe we don't really need it you know anyway. What's but. what's frame rate what's frame rate got to do with gameplay? Uh, if Why would a- anyone care? I, if it's a first-person shooter, when you're playing PvP, um, reaction time is extremely important. Right. Uh, so frame rate is huge when it comes to a multi-platform type of a game, that, especially where your last shot is extremely important. Yeah. I mean, you've played Call of Duty and stuff. Call of Duty. Imagine, I mean, playing Call of Duty now at 60 frames and playing another game, another shooter that's not 60 frames a second. Um, you can see a different. It's it's yeah. it's it's not it's not as fast. It's not as fluid. Um, so for shooters, definitely. But yeah. I suck at both. And it sucks because our Call of Duty. <laughs> it sucks because our Call of Duty guy decided to leave early. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> so, but like, it's, it's it'll be interesting with that though, because do we need do we need a sixty frames per second, you know, episodic content, you know, single player type game like Last of Us? Do you really need that? I would argue no, because I want to be more cinematic, right? Yeah. I think the picture of the game, the more frame rate you need. Right. Yeah. I, I would I would ask Neeraj about that, you know, as an animator, you know, like how in terms of all your frames, like do you feel like 30 frames per second is sufficient to show like your hard work versus 60? 
Um, I think I think thirty is, um, but like I like to play sixty, right? Like I okay. like I play Overwatch pretty much nightly and every afternoon, and I love it. I suck at it, but I love it. Um, <laughs> I don't want any kind of hitches. I don't want it. I don't want to miss. You know, tra- tracing. You know, Genji because I really kill. I want to kill that guy. I want to kill him. I want to get rid of him. Um, and he's a he's a fast dude. And so if I'm hitching at all, dude, no, 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 that's right. not gonna work. And then uh, quick, right? Quick champions is coming out soon. Uh, that's old school, right? But that was twitchy, mm-hmm. super fast speed. You want sixty uh, frames per second because are they sixty? Are they sixty? Will they be sixty? Um, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure they are. I think so. I mean, I, I thought. Well, imagine they wouldn't. Yeah. Can you imagine Why? a quick game at 30? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. All the rockets. There's no way. Here it comes. It's coming. It's coming. It's All right, coming. Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, Dodge. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, frame rate is definitely important. So, um, yeah. but we'll see. But I do see that it does, it does create a, a problem when you're trying to uh, accommodate everyone, you know, accommodate yeah. a lot of different price points, right? You yeah. can't have two different systems on both sides, both Sony and Microsoft, and not have and not stay at that thirty. Well, yeah, I think, I think the the players, um, the people, consumers, just have to know that look, the system is capable of sixty, but some games will be developed for thirty. You know, it's like right. just because it can do it doesn't mean the game That's should right. do it. Yeah. Right, 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 right. That's the other thing. I, I, I don't know if this is actually, I've heard it talked about a few times, um, but like Destiny being clocked at 60 frames per second on PC, but then the Xbox uh, One X is supposed to be able to, you know, do 60 frames per second, but I don't know if it's like a deal or something out with Bungie lock, locking them in at 30. I don't, I've heard that talk going back and forth, so I don't know if that's, Actually, yeah, that's what the main thing that people are just saying because if because that means the other versions of the Xbox won't be able to run it if right. they if they if they said that the Xbox One version One X version sixty. Mm. So it seems like it seems like with those guys who are actually working on the games for the next system, it seems like they've kind of created a standard of it being thirty, and like a lot of the journalistic sites, IGN and stuff like, kind of picked up on that. And that's been like that main question, you know, when the press gets a gets an idea in their head, they've been asking every developer and slowly we've, we've seen press releases come out in the last couple of days or last week or so about the after E3. Like, yeah, this is a 30 or whatever. Because obviously I don't really talk about it, but yeah. yeah. So let me just say real quick, because I'm sure I'm, I, you guys talked about this and I missed it, but um, this year E3, I was really looking forward to seeing um, Microsoft really – Show us some exclusives. I don't know if you guys covered that. No, not yet. You're good. You're perfect. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Because that that was the thing that I really wanted to see them, you know, compete with. Because I was always like a Dreamcast and an Xbox kind of a, you know, a follower. But then I had to jump on Sony, man, with all these exclusives. You know, Horizon Mm -hmm. Zero Dawn, dude. I mean, near no, I'm gonna talk about dinosaurs. That's a no brainer. (laughs) No, no. I I had to jump on that real quick, and then. I still haven't played that. I'm so sorry. Dude, that game is sick. And if you have a PS Pro, man, this is gonna. Anyway, yeah. So in you know, The Last of Us, um, what a God of War, all these exclusives, and then you jump over and get look at this awesome new Xbox One X, and then they're touting how much power it has, and the chip and all the all the stuff in it. But then the games they show feel like indie games, and I was just kind of like, dude, like I, it kind of threw me a little bit. Mm-hmm. I want to give the you know Phil Spencer an opportunity to make those connections or whatever games that they need to do. But when games like Scale Bomb are getting canceled, I feel like they're like all over the place over there. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. And like, um, this is one re- this is one of the things I want to like reach out to old guys I worked with at EA, um, where like but the old studio manager at EA Chicago here is Kudo Tetsunoda. And he's <laughs> like one of the heads over there at Xbox Two now. And I just want to know what, I wish I could be like, yo, just what are you doing? Like, like what, what's going on? Because I had an Xbox <laughs> Two. I mean, Carlos, you had an Xbox. And it was like, you know, you 
tend to do a system based on where all your buddies have one, right? Yeah. yeah. And you get forced. And like, I, the market's the same thing. I got forced to move over. I used to be on Xbox Live because we know yeah. Xbox Live was amazing and right. playing PlayStation because we know that, like, well, PlayStation doesn't have a really good online chat, but everybody has an Xbox. So we'll use the Xbox Live chat right. and then we'll play our, the one or two exclusives that yeah. Sony had. And so yeah. it was like, I'll show you exclusives. And then they, just, <laughs> they kept showing exclusives, and I kept buying stuff for the PlayStation instead of the Xbox. Yeah. The Xbox like collects dust now in my uh, my playroom, <laughs> in my kids' playroom. Dude, listen, man, I'm trying to figure out how to justify it. Like, Buying got, it, right? I, yeah, my wife is looking at me like, you, I haven't seen you use that thing, that big block down underneath your PS4, like since you <laughs> took me to buy it. And then I had to talk her into letting me get a PS Pro and she's like, but you don't even use the other one. That's I'm like, ah, oh, no. Like I know, yeah. right? I haven't even had that conversation. I can't even fix your lips to talk about my <laughs> Xbox One X when I get smacked in the lips by my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm gonna have to I, like say know. it's a development tool or something. I'm gonna have to go <laughs> out, pull off the card. That's all I got, man. That's the only card. My wife looked at me like she's looking straight through me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to do it because, like, yeah, the Xbox. You know, I get real. Like, I have like. I have the username of Echo, right. no, no numbers. That's it. Like, and I like had that since the very first Xbox, but like I haven't used that thing in like two years almost. Yeah. And like, so it's like basically a DV, a DVD or Blu-ray player for my for my kids now. Very much. Know, let me because, tell you. Yeah. Let me tell you my story real quick. Uh-oh. Uh, I went and got my Xbox, and then I plugged it in, and I got the Red Ring of Death. So if you look on my Instagram, you see what happens if you give me the red ring of death. I took that bad boy outside, climbed up on the roof, <laughs> set up my phone. You just threw it off. And I dropped a boulder on that bad boy. <laughs> and you just see it just shatter into bits and pieces. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, take that. Rah. <laughs> and then I forgot who it was, reached out and was like, yeah, you know you could have sent that back. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 The most expensive Instagram post ever. <laughs> hey guys, I'm sorry. Really quick. But no, Raj, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Raj. It was, it was really great talking to you guys tonight. Well, this oh, game. yeah, good. We have to have you back, Raj. Thanks, thanks for coming yeah, on. We'll man. get you back. Thank you. Appreciate See you, buddy. See you. Okay. It was good seeing you. I hope we see you again. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, we better. Raj, come back to us. If I have to fly to Austin and and yeah, and we do a special like, show, do a, right? do like a straight up gorilla show. Be like, oh, I'm here live at uh, Raj's house. Keep it on Raj's couch, and we're gonna do an interview <laughs> real quick. <laughs> no, but yeah, you so told me you were combing your hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's four in the morning. Go to bed, coast. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Sorry, good to I digress. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a hard sell, though, uh, Mark. It's a very hard sell for that new one, even though it's good. It's finally good, like water-cooled. It feels like a little mini PC. You know it's going to okay. be good, but so, there's nothing on it. But, okay, so then there's that. But then these guys just open up, you know, you can play everything on the PC, uh, I'm just trying to figure out, like, why would you buy one when you can play all the same games on PC? You know, so I don't know. Right, because then I look over here at this this rig here. It's like eight, nine cores. Yeah. So like, why? I already, I already have this. That's yeah. all I really need. Charlie just wanted to show off. Yeah, yeah, Charlie. You have a big computer. I'm a yeah, PC yeah. elitist now. <laughs> but like, but like the 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 PlayStation is still there though. It's the one that gets the love though, right now. Because you can't, you can't, I mean, you can't really beat those. those, those. Was there about, anything else? Was there anything else that we needed to? Well, uh, there's a couple surprises real quick. I think at the end, I think they had a, they're doing a couple of remakes. I mean, I don't know if that's a surprise, but the Shadow of Colossus because yeah, I like to see the gameplay. Of it. Huh? It's being done here, or that got done here in Austin. Really? Where? Yeah, I didn't know that. At uh, Blue Point. Oh, wow. At the Starbucks on the corner. How many studios you guys got in Austin? 
More, no. yeah, I, I knew that studio was here, but I didn't know they were doing that. When I heard that, I was like, oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Wow. Uh -huh. I, it's just like, there's a lot of like, hidden good things going on down there where you're at. Dude, <laughs> Austin's been killing it. Mm -hmm. So much so that they're starting to kick people out. <laughs> they get too crowded. <laughs> yeah. So what, what studios are there? Yeah, well, uh, where Ra where Raj is at, they have Arcane, and then I'm at Certain Affinity. They have a, a company called QC. Oh. Um, there's a Bioware. Mm -hmm. um, Bioware. Yeah, oh. they're working on Anthem. Um, that's the Anthem people, guys. Oh no way! And yeah, so that's the original Bioware guys. So those are those are the guys. The original. That's the original Wait, studio. I Okay, I thought they were Montreal or... Something. No, that's, that, that's, that's the new one, yeah. Studios in Edmonton, but they're also yeah. working on it down here. Yeah. yeah. I had no mm. idea. Yeah, there's still... Uh, what's What did... Who bought out? There's a Daybreak studio here. Daybreak, yep, there. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh, the guys who made... Um, oh, I'm forgetting their name. This... I'm even impressed if you if you can name your guy. You about you're up to like five or six so far. You know, there's a new one. I think there. It's the guys who did um, Dark Siders. They just started a new. Oh, yeah, they got a new one. It's, yeah. Is it the Dark? Yeah, it's Joe Madden, right? So, yeah. It's the it's the Final Fantasy style Dark Siders game, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're called War Machine or something. I can't remember. Uh, oh, um, yeah, it's uh. Oh, what is it? I'm gonna look it up. It's um. I'm look it out too. Wait, did they do Dark Sider three or just? They they have a new one with basically it's turn based like Final Fantasy, you know where you walk a little bit and then you and you run into the the battle, but it's with Wait. dark battle chasers. It's with the battle chasers. Is it right. gunfire? Gunfire games. That sounds. Gunfire. Yep, that's yeah, the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, THQ for the publisher. Oh, they have THQ still. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, that was really cool. They showed that at E3, too. Yeah. What stole the show for me, and then I, I think we can can wrap here soon, but like what stole the show for me, because I'm, I'm a really big in, with the whole fighting game community. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, Justice already came out. You know, it's a DC fighting game. They, Dude, they showed stuff. Yeah, that's really good. And the story is really good. I mean, they oh, even man. had bits of the story yeah. in the actual movie for uh, Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Yeah, that, that 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 whole flashback section where uh, in that movie was like that's from the script of a game, which is crazy to me. Dude, the facial animations in that game and mm -hmm. uh, the lighting. I wanted to talk to Nerd about the animation in that game. Yeah, yeah it's, it's good, and they they had the whole motion capture yeah uh, uh, thing where they had where they were doing a lot of shoots there, and then the surprise one. Uh, which is uh, which is, I don't know. Most people don't know this, but the surprise one was they're doing a Dragon Ball Z fighter. Oh, yeah, which looks amazing. It's Unreal Engine. Carl, you like this, Carlos? It's the Unreal Engine, um, but they're the same guys who did another fighting game called Guilty Gear. Yep. And um, so the what what makes this studio claim to fame is they do a really good cel shaded game. So it looks like an anime. It looks like a cartoon. But it's but it's uh 3D instead of sprites instead of 2D. So it's like they're calling it 2.5D, but it looks every bit of like like it looks amazing because like when they when they start to when they like you know power up or whatever like people's faces are turning blue and yellow. That's how bright the hues are coming off the screen off the screen uh, because it looks so looks so good and fluid. So that was surprised. I think they got they got a best in show too. Uh, oh, they did best show. I think they they did uh, for for that genre, so that was surprising, and they end up looking better than the Marvel Infinite. So that's that's been the other big thing is the art style for the Capcom Marvel Marvel Fighter. Yeah, is, uh, is lackluster. So that was that was interesting, also. You know what I have to say? I was excited to see um, uh, Upres um, Shadow of Colossus. It looks like they're building everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. I mean. We are in a day where you know I do want to see all new content, but man, I, Shadow Colossus was one of my favorite games. Um, uh, you know, next to Castlevania, you know, Lords of Shadow. But it was yeah. just amazing to see that they're redoing all the geo and the environments and everything. So I'm really pumped about that game too. The last thing, one other thing you got, you guys should check out for everybody's listening. You should check out a game called Abs Absolver. That's another cool one, uh, obscurity you haven't seen that one. That was a third-person fighting 
fighting game, you have to learn different fighting styles and stuff like that. But the art style is really, really cool with that one. So check out Absolver if you haven't seen that one. Speaking of which, I've been watching the uh, pre-alpha gameplay of the last night. And just as I said before, the artwork is fantastic. <laughs> uh, you guys, oh, really? You guys, you guys should check it out. It looks really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I told you guys, uh, pixel art is not out yet. <laughs> really, it's this is still, what we're doing. It's still, you know, still got legs. <laughs> uh, the soundtrack yeah. sounds good too. You know. <laughs> yeah. I just want to figure out how they did that. Yeah, like it's like pixel art on some other level. <laughs> yeah, it's like three D pixel art, but but well, I mean the ne- the, the last the, night, the last night. Here, I'll put it in here, and then we'll put we'll it put in, in the chat for you. too. I threw Dragon Ball Z up there too. If you want to check that, yeah, I was looking at that while you guys were talking. That looks pretty cool, right? Yeah. It's like another level, and that's unreal. And what's crazy oh, is the game. The game is in 3D pixel art, which is fine. It, that looks phenomenal. Oh, this looks awesome. But, but the raindrops on the windows that right? are not that. What is like that? Is crazy. Like we're we're back to another <laughs> Cuphead. We're going to. Wait a year, however, however long, to figure out yeah. how to do this. Dude, you know? that's, that's my problem. That's what I'm talking about. Like, what, uh, you know, is, is, wait, is Cuphead exclusive? I don't think it's exclusive, is it? Yeah, we just, yeah, got that's them. what people saying that. Like, it's, I think it's, it's uh, exclusive on Xbox. Xbox. Yeah, so is this one. This Pixel that's Game? Cool. Really? Dude. That's to where? To Xbox? Yeah, to Xbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If you have a PlayStation, you might as well just go ahead and sell that thing. No, that's. I think get Xbox only it. have a couple of them. They, they, get they rid of it. <laughs> Look at you. Get rid of it. Uh, <laughs> Pix- pixel art only lives on Xbox. <laughs> so, so I'm not sure we needed a Scorpio or Xbox X to pull this off. I know, right? We have to go HD to get pixel art back. Like, yeah, 4K. 4K, <laughs> 4K uh, Minecraft. 4K Minecraft, right? Yeah, yeah that's what's going to happen. We're going to get a Minecraft next year. It's going to look amazing, but it's going to be all boxes still. <laughs> I, I want to try that and see if I can make that. Um, yeah. Well, have you seen that one? Okay, like you guys know about the mar- Marmoset, right? Yeah. Have you tried the Hexels, the Hexels uh, engine they have with that, where you can make pixel art? Oh. No. Yeah, so Marmoset has a, another little uh, program you can buy called, uh, Hex, I think it's called Hexels. And, like, you could do that whole, like, really cool generative, like, pixel art stuff. So. Wow. wow. I'll put it in the show notes too, if you guys didn't see it. But it's cool. Um and uh it's it's interesting yeah like it's a whole program you could do it now i always think this is cool from a marmoset standpoint but i was like why i don't i didn't understand why they made that little engine like i'm like wh- where does this go do i can i export this out it like lives in this engine but and obviously you can do like a screenshot or something like that but other than that like i, mean, I, don't, I don't really know unless you can do game yeah it's called hexels h-e-x-e-l-s yeah so I'll, I'll put the link in the chat and then I'll have it in the show notes. It's interesting. You can make these little gift type animations. So yeah, check, check that out. Yeah. All right, Carlos. Yeah. So yeah. What, what about Nintendo? Did, uh, um, what do you guys think about uh, that Mario in New York City or wherever he's running around now? I didn't even watch the, the Nintendo keynote. I, I, I accidentally watched it, dude. I, <laughs> I want to get something for my son, you know, where we could play together, but it's like... Yeah, blame it on your son. I have to blame it on my son. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm yeah, my son. I don't know if you guys been on my Facebook. I, I've, I've stuck a PlayStation controller in my daughter's hands. Like, that <laughs> younger. <laughs> but no. She's like, like, she's like, uh-uh, daddy, this is not pixel art. <laughs> it's cool. Like, the, 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 the little new, the Switch is cool in person, but I still feel like Everybody bought that system that like that loves Nintendo for like four games. So basically Zelda and like like Mario Kart, right? right? right. Yeah. And I'm like, they they getting you. They like getting you like every year. They like they throw a new Mario in your face, and then maybe they'll come out with another Zelda, and you'll buy a whole system yeah. for two games. 
Well, like, it, I get it's mobile, but you know, I, I haven't bought a system yet, so not not this one. Save your money. Go get go get an iPhone. They got Mario Run on that bad boy. Go <laughs> get go get Mario Run and call it a day. They said that Pokemon. They have. They they also announced Pokemon Go for for the for the Switch. Which they have it's a new 3D engine or something. They said it looked pretty cool, I guess. How do you do that? You can take it with you? Oh yeah, you yeah. can. Yeah, the switch is like totally mobile. Like you take it off the thing and yeah, take yeah, it with you. The switch is like, a little bit cool. It's like a game gear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can just take the take the But it's like it's off. like a game gear meets the Transformers. Yeah. Meets the iPad. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. Yeah, it looks pretty cool in person. It's a definitely one of those ones you have to see in person. I got it's a hard sell to me over like in E3 or watching it online because once I saw it in person, even though I was giving it so much like hate, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I still didn't want to, you know, pick it up for just Zelda, even though they said that Zelda game is amazing. You know, I don't know. Zelda's yeah. not enough, man. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's like, nope, not enough. It's not enough. Mm-hmm. I want to say Raj was a big Zelda head. Yeah. See, so yeah, I had buddies that work and a couple other people and people I saw people talking online. They they saw a new Zelda, they're like, you know, nope, let me get this console. I have to get it. I was like, okay, but then what's next? Mm-hmm. Middle of the summer, what are you gonna play? <laughs> right. You know why I don't play Zelda? Because I'm a grown ass man. I do, no, please say, I heard it's like the best Zelda they've made. And it's like, you know, Final Fantasy, good, epic, like episodic. Good story, like huge world to be on that little bitty console. You know, it's like I heard it was good, but I was always thinking. I I thought Nintendo always had a problem with me in, in terms of like second and third party developers. Um, my the when I was at High Voltage, we did a lot of games for like the Nintendo Wii and then like the Wii Fit. So we was like a Nintendo developer a little bit, but like. It was almost like what Sony used to have problems with back in the day, and they made it, and they said that Xbox was really good with when you know Xbox had the nice dev kit, and then remember when the PlayStation used to be huge, and then but Xbox was a little bit easier to develop for. It felt like that with uh, with uh, Nintendo a little bit, where like first party Nintendo is always gonna make some cool, interesting stuff to make people want to buy it, like a really cool Zelda game or a really cool Mario game, you know. But like when you get down the line of like second and third, those other guys, like the dissemination of information about how that would how to get the best out of that console, I felt like always was lacking and they always lacked in that area in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so it's it always turned out to be a lack of games and you know. Yeah. So it's always I, interesting. I just feel like right now Sony is the one who's like, uh, you know, I've, I've sunk a lot of hours in Witcher 3 and, you know, um, you know, uh, the new, new, new latest Tomb Raider. Like, I thought that looked sick, you know. Yeah, you sunk a lot of hours in Horizon, too. I saw it on the, on the, on the Horizon a lot, too. But yeah. it seems like the Horizon seems like there's a lot of stuff to look at. Though. Dude, Horizon Joe Dawn, like, blew me away, man, especially, like, on the PS Pro. Um, the Guerrilla Games, uh, like, I, I played uh, – Killzone, you know, the first one, and then I got into the um, the one for the PS4. But I was kind of like, I was, I was in my Halo days, so which I mm-hmm. still love Halo. Um, but now, you know, I kind of put it down, and so I was just really impressed to see them, you know, take the whole company and get inspired about, a, you know, a new vision, and then they all attack it and, you know, do something as cool as that, you know, so. I do like that about all the, I still get goosebumps we talk about seeing the same things each year, but I still get goosebumps as we, as we uh, talk about E3 here when we watch a new game being being debuted. Like Anthem, I got that I, I got that good that got that goosebumps like I'm studying now. I got that same type of feeling of like, oh man, this is new. You've never seen it. You know, you know, you she's stepping into a mech that's been done, but still, it's like a new game, a breath of fresh air, a little bit. Yeah, they're borrowing a little bit of Destiny design, you know, which is not a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but what I, I want them to push story. I'm a big story guy, you know, right. and lore in the world. And you know, when I when I develop worlds, the first thing I think of is the story and the spaces that you know the player where the characters come from. 
Yeah. You know, that looks like it's going to be rich with. And it looked interesting, like the city yeah. behind the wall jumping into that the the vast landscape. Yeah. You Even know, the little lantern in that the little lantern in that city scene was like yeah. different. It looked cool. I was like somebody right. that out. That was cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Like yeah, well, yeah, and how the canopy was, and and it, this, there was a bunch of little things in that little uh, bazaar or marketplace that was kind of interesting. You know. Yeah. Made yeah. me feel like an old game. I don't know if I'm going to date myself with you know, where I'm myself, but like, what's the other game? Um, made me feel like it was an old game that came out. Uh, it was like cream based game didn't didn't really come out. Huxley, yeah. Huxley. Yeah. Huxley. Oh, oh, I remember Huxley. Yeah. yeah. See, I was about it. I didn't have a show with just these two <laughs> the whole time, like, because like, right. there's very rare that I could throw out a random game like that and people know what it is. But that environment was like, and that like game was had a rich um world that never really got told based on the the way it was constructed the free to play you know mark uh ip that they put into it i thought i thought it cheapened what it was because it was very interesting you know i mean the way they pitched it it was the original what destiny was i mean i wasn't it supposed to be the first mmo shooter right yes it was supposed to be what destiny is yes yeah it's supposed to be that it's supposed to be like you can play like or like what you what you do for every day. Wow, it's supposed to be supposed to be like wow, but a shooter. Yeah, but and a shooter. Destiny and then Destiny did that at E3, and they said it's open world because I'm a big MMO player. So like it's open world, and I'm still waiting on the console to do it. So maybe Anthem will do it. We have to see. Like you can uh, be a Destiny, but be open world. Are you really going to be open world, or is it like menu system, lobby system? Because that's not that's not really open world shooter. You know. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to like spoil it for people, but like, I mean, like I said, I'm a level designer. So when I, whenever I see certain, I can see like canned shots or like very little right. shots from a mile away. And, um, you know, like some of that Vista that was out in the background, I'd be, I'd, um, I'd be more impressed when I see them walking through the spaces, you know, yeah. um, instead of walking down a, a hallway. Cause it, it could be a hub and spoke design, which is what Bungie likes to do, you know? Yeah. This hallway so you can get a, a, a nice reveal and then it opens up to a big open play space then it tightens up again so i, I i'll give them a bit benefit of the doubt until i see it mm -hmm. you know a little more of it but um you know here's yeah. two new ips you know right right because yeah the vista did look a little bit a little bit matte painting ish you know in the background yeah but our, uh, our, these engines are good enough to make you know the stuff look like um concept art game yeah look like concept mm -hmm. art stuff. yeah they do yeah yeah and they and they can do they can do big worlds you know yeah, they can absolutely. do like unreal now can do you know the a, a procedural more procedural like vast environment yeah. they showed it with the uh, kite demo yeah you know, that we saw two years ago you know I that mean, you, it, it, horizon right right their environments and they're they're pretty big right they're still kind yeah, of really yeah, yeah 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 so with really dense uh, foliage and different landscapes, different biomes, mm -hmm. weather, animation for all the characters and the you know the uh, creatures that exist in the space. I mean, it's what I was hoping Destiny was going to be. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people thought that. Yeah. Yeah, I want Destiny to think about more like uh, you know foliage and fauna. You know, like just things that live in the world outside of. I know it's supposed to be a decimated time. But yeah. what type of fallout things happen? You know, creatures that you know could exist. You know, so I want them to play around with more life in the world. You know, yeah. things that could be a hazard besides just direct enemies that you run into. Division was close. Got close to that. It really was. Division, Division was close to that. They yeah. just had. They just ran into the classic MMO problem of itemization, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you got you got your pro players and you got your like tryhards that like race to the end and worked on exploits and they found out really quickly that you can't ban everybody. Yeah. And, you know, people like, like, you know, you work at Blizzard, you guys know that because you guys done it for years, but it's interesting to see the developers still have to try to tackle those same things because you're going to get those MMO players, you're going to get those guys that are going to migrate over. Yeah. Now you got to figure out how do you, you really, you wanted an open world game, now you have those same type of problems mm -hmm. and those deal with, you know, itemization, you know, exactly. briefing, all that good stuff. Yeah. So I hope so. It's tricky when you make a new game from, you know, new systems from the ground up. You know, I mean, Bungie had, I mean, excuse me, Blizzard has always, you know, they do a really good job of um, 
iteration, you know, sometimes we don't get it right, but a lot of times, you know, we just do what we know works, you know, over and over and over again, just put a new skin on it. And um, people love it. And, and sometimes that's like the best answer instead of starting, you know, you can iterate here and there, but, you know, I'm not a systems guy. So I, you know, I just, you know, I just look at what the guys here, you know, what they do. Yeah. You know, I'm at all at how good they are at this mm -hmm. stuff. And the only other thing we didn't talk about was that really good Spider-Man game from Asa. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was yeah, I forgot about that one. That one's that looks awesome. That was dope. Did you Dude. see they had Miles? They had Miles. I don't know why they put Miles Morales at, at the end, because that tells me something from a comic book. I'm a nerd. Are you telling me that you're gonna <laughs> kill all Spider-Man that we just watched for like the last five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> or is he just in there just to tease? Because remember that's what happened. And that's how he became Spider-Man. Like, uh, it was great. I loved it. Like the story, it's like a lot of depth. Yeah. Uh, I was a massive fan of Arkham Asylum and Arkham uh, City, the most recent mm -hmm. Batman. Yeah, it looks like they're pulling some cues because you know there's been a lot of Spider-Man yeah. games. Right. Uh, this one looks like they really thought about the design and you know put some time into it, money. You see how much stuff they was it was doing with the web? Like yeah. it was like three or four different types of ways to stick somebody to a to a surface, you can hang them. You can like literally like cover them and stick them, or you can you can do like a like where you can like throw them against against it and they stick. Yeah. It was like it was interesting. Yeah, and, and the suit design was bananas. It was awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. That effect oh. when they rolled him up into the where he grabbed that one guy and rolled him up into. Oh the yeah, yeah, that was that, that one was too. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was really the cool. webbing looked cool too. That was cool. yeah, yeah, the webbing looked really really cool. I was like, I was so glad I remembered that because I would have felt like, oh, we have to talk about that Spider-Man game. The Spider-Man game was like, and we haven't had one in a while because I think we got a little bit of Spider-Man fatigue. I bought all the mm -hmm. ones that came out before, but I liked them. But yeah. I did recognize it was like, okay, you're getting to be a lot. <laughs> they were in their typical EA, you know, we got a movie, so we got to make the game kind of. Right, right. Put a little more love into it than other games, you know, but you know how when Batman came out, it was like, okay, they totally – Went with their, you know, that was it, was it yeah. Frank Miller or like they went with that really big Batman? Yeah, he was like it was like a, it was like kind of Frank Miller style, but he was like he just big and he had the classic uh, animated series. Yeah, you know? and he, they they played up heavily on the detective stuff. And yeah. I remember when I first turned on his his cow, and then like he scanned the room and it had the whole forensics. Yeah. I was like, whoa, this is like yeah, right. this is yeah. like they did, when they do it right, like when the design gets it right. Yeah. Story and implementation in terms of gameplay, you know, yeah, they into, did into the UI. It was like really good. Yeah, and and we may get some of that with Spider Man because it looks like he's got the robotic or the animated mm -hmm. eyes. So right, that yeah. type of uh, something in his in his mask like Batman. Mm -hmm. And I would even say that the I I love the deal. I'm I'm, I'm so glad they buried the hatchet, and there's there's some type of like joint venture deal. With uh, Marvel Studios and Fox, and that's why we yeah. get in the Homecoming. I yeah. watched another trailer yesterday. Yeah. They had like a small vignette, uh, vignette snippet. It wasn't a trailer; it was just like a scene. Okay, it's really good. I think it's yeah. really good. Like the whole play between him and Robert Downey Jr. and him having a him <laughs> having a suit that he made him a suit. It's yeah. really good. So it's not yeah. like it's a regular suit. It's actually like. Basically, like Iron Man. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's interesting. It seems as long as it's a Spider Man movie and not a Iron Man movie. That's the only thing I worry about. But yeah. yeah. I think the, the character is more age appropriate, too. The other one seemed a little bit too old. Yeah. 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 And I like the personality. He was just way too excited. Way Yo, it was too, great in the way movie, too right? chatty, way too. I'm like, this kid is perfect for this. But they did little things, and they and they, and they do that in video games too. But they did little things for the people who who like comics. Did you notice that even though he was so chatty, and you're like pretty much laughing through that whole fight scene, that's supposed to be a little bit more serious, but he made it totally lighthearted. Yeah. Everybody he went against, he was like literally resting them a little, <laughs> a little bit. Like he was like stunned on all of them. Like. Oh, there was a couple of things where he was like fighting, uh, fighting uh, old boy inside, uh, Bucky inside, and he's just like, like, oh, you got a metal arm, and just grabbed it like one hand. Yeah, he's like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> this is cool. Like, even though like, everyone else is like fighting, fighting their hardest, we just yeah. watched 
we just watched everybody chase him down like two scenes ago. And he goes and throws a punch and he just grabs it with one hand. I'm like, man, you have a metal arm. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like it's just cool. I love when they do little stuff like that. It's just That'd like, be awesome. Yeah. When's it come out? Ah, uh, the homecoming's coming out like July sixth. Yeah, it's coming up in like two weeks hey. or so. Oh, that's gonna be cool. Yeah. Um yeah. real real quick, I just want to throw out, out there too before we forget. Uh uh Days Gone. And then um, Microsoft's oh, yeah, yeah. version of uh, what was there's um, the State of Decay. I I would be embarrassed because Days Gone looks so good. <laughs> I didn't see State of Decay. Yeah, it's it's kind of like Microsoft's version of I don't know. I want to say it's their answer because it's State of Decay. It's not there. <laughs> but it it was an indie game, but it felt like you know Phil Spencer maybe gave him some more money and yeah. Something, I, but I, I don't know. But State of Decay is another one of those games. You were talking about Spider Man that I, yeah. I, I really want to play. Yeah. So I have to, I have to look. I'm gonna have to look at that trailer now. I didn't, I didn't get to see that one, but yeah. State of Decay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I didn't see that. Oh, one. I'm sorry. Days, you mean days gone or State of Decay? Days gone. Days gone. Days gone. There you go. Yeah, um, so I've cool. been checking out. I've been checking out Marmoset Hexels. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. I have a quick question. Yeah. At what point are they? At what point are they going to start doing architectural rendering in in pixel art? <laughs> it's, it's, an it's an interesting little program. I don't know the market for it. I don't understand it. It's cool. It's cool, but I feel like it's like for Instagram or something. I don't. I don't, I don't understand. Like, I think that day might have passed passed us by a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Could you imagine? Can, uh, yeah. Someone's it's like, "This is my house. These are the the blueprints. Can you do this in like pixel art?" Yeah, I, I like, think it's cool. No, I think it's totally cool. I just like you know, you got you made something like tool bag, and it's like almost like, "Yo, we're gonna have, we need a break. Let's go back and do some pixel art real quick. <laughs> Keep our sanity. We'll we'll take some three sixty panels. We'll, we'll sell those. The people like those, and like we'll come back to the viewer, but." This hexels. Let's make some like running water and zen out, <laughs> and zen out. You know, because you can animate with it, which I think is really cool. That's why I wanted to show you, Carlos. I thought you might like. Are you looking at a disco right now or something? Hmm. Your screen was flashing in front of your face. <laughs> That's that pixel art. That's that pixel art. <laughs> like you scroll down on that page. We'll put it in the show notes. You, you can. It's it's all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's move into uh, this or that. And Charlie, you can chime in too on this since half our panel decided to leave early. <laughs> it's okay. All right, um, go ahead. What you got for us? Uh, would you guys rather play games on a PC or on a console? Visa? Oh, I like PC. I just had that conversation. DeMarcus? That's, I know. That's really tough. Uh, only because I have so many like family members who play on console. I'll have to. I I, I like both. I I'll have to say console for now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna say PC. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say PC. I um, I'll chime in too. Uh, I remember I remember playing Quake, and I remember playing like all these other. Games when I was in the when I was at this uh, this game company, and that was a lot of fun. So for nostalgic reasons, I'll say PC. Nice. So I first met Carlos yelling at a PC. Yeah, <laughs> that's a true story. Yeah, come off the I elevator. Saying, I was saying something ignorant about someone's mother, and while playing old school Battlefield, like yeah. not even Battlefield, like old school. Like remember when it was a mod. And, and this is and this is before everyone started cheating and getting the joystick to fly the planes. Yeah, yeah, where you didn't understand how to fly the planes with the keyboard. <laughs> like early days of Battlefield. I don't know what it was a mod based off of, but whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so then when now now with everyone talking about AR, VR and stuff, um, you have a lot of people with well uh, delivering dare I say the same content in different ways. 
So would yeah, you guys right. would you guys rather do VR with a headset or with a handheld device? Mark. Wait, how do you mean handheld? You mean like just like you know how uh so like Apple, when Apple no when Apple announced they were getting into the VR, mm -hmm. uh they they had an uh an iPad. They would hold the iPad up like Oh this. AR. Okay. That's, yeah. that's weird. Uh, I'd do the VR, the headset. Headset? Yeah. It was AR, like, you know, camera, 3D models on the table type of. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, AR yeah. versus VR, yeah. yeah. You no, know, I feel like I haven't seen enough of that. Like, I don't even know. I only saw that one demo at E3 that one time. Dude, there's a, there's a couple. Well, Pokemon Go is AR. Yeah, um, that's yeah. another version. That's another example. Yeah. Yeah. I saw another cool game. It was a card game where if you used your you would play the cards but if you put your phone and put it over the card you could see like the creature that was on the card oh wow mm -hmm. they've had some of those things too where the, the creatures are on top of the cards that, yeah. that's more practical the ar stuff seems more practical yeah. but I, I mean so which one would you pick Fisa? the ar if ar AR. with a handheld or a headset the handheld yeah mm. i have to look at that because i might change my mind mm. uh, Cool. Take a look at what. what take a look at what Apple did. I'll see if yeah, I can find that's it. That's the newest one. It was. I think it's in show notes from last week. Um. Cause um I, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Fisa. I'll. I'll. Uh, I'll try to find this real quick. Oh no! I found here's the Genesis augmented trade trading card game. I'll show you. Uh, if I can get it. Yeah. Let's see. Next. Is this an ad? Oh come on, son. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, would you guys rather be on a computer network or a social network? Huh? <laughs> uh, social. I'd be social. Nice. Uh, it looks like Demarcus froze. So, how about you, Charlie? Um, probably. I don't know. Computer network in what way, though? Like a. You tell me. Hmm. You know we're usually vague AF when it comes to this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's go with computer. Let's go with computer because there's a couple other niche communities to be good. I'd rather be on a social network. Uh, let's see. And that, that's one of the big reasons why I always had an Xbox is because I knew all you guys were always on it. Mm -hmm. And it was my way to catch up with all my friends. No matter what time zone or whatever. Yeah. And when, we, so nice. when we were doing the down in front thing, I wrote an article talking about how my Xbox was basically my chat client. Mm, yes, <laughs> and, <the messenger. laughs> and, and the PS4 was a DVD player. <laughs> um... Okay, as uh, would you guys rather watch Twitch or watch YouTube? Ooh, watch Twitch because I like watching people make their com. I like watching the comments as much as I like what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna say Twitch too because the FGC, the fighting game community, is really, really hilarious when they have those tournaments. Yeah. So, like, you get a couple, you get like twenty thousand people watching. Watching it, that chat is like a melting pot of like, <laughs> of like amazing, like, oh my gosh, it's so, it's so it's the craziest thing people say. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've laughed out loud because you get that one witty dude that's like, okay, that's that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I don't know. This one is actually really hard for me because I like watching both. Uh, but I'm gonna have to go YouTube. YouTube's definitely stepped up, but it's but it's it's a close race. Yeah, you, YouTube I feel like steps up. I told I told my wife that like, man, I'm watching YouTube a lot lately. And it's not just like tutorials and stuff like that. It's little other stuff, your vloggers that you follow and stuff like that. So it's it's definitely definitely Sorry, guys. Up. No no worries. Oh, good. Would you? My load it. <laughs> would you rather watch YouTube or Twitch? Uh, for me, it's YouTube. Oh. Uh, we're 50-50 here. Yeah, we're 50-50. Uh, 
Um, all right. So then I, uh, uh, when it comes to game storylines, which would you rather be a part of? A game with a World War II setting or zombies? Zombies for me. Yeah, zombies for me too. I don't know if I want zombies. <laughs> But I don't want to go to the war. I wish I wish I could fly back. One of these days, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like, uh, if I say this, this this thing is gonna wake up. But hey, Google, can you go to the part of Sketch Zone history where Charlie says he thinks zombies are played out? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I don't think I want to be with zombies. I think, but like, but I think World War Two has played out too, though. Well, we we're we're, we're at a reset. I was uh, that was my joke, and, and t- I forgot to do it, Chubbs, because like we are full circle now with with shooters and like subject matter, because we started out in World War One, and then went to World War Two, and we're back. Because isn't the new Call of Duty like World War Two now, or like yeah. the, yep. the battlefields of World War One? World War II now, like we're like full circle where we went from like old school to the future, and we're in space, and now like they're trying to reset it. Like, yeah, they learned their lesson. <laughs> and <they're> in. <laughs> right? Like I don't know. I thought I would think they would get more backlash from 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 like blatantly like saying, you know what, we you guys bought this ten years ago. You'll probably buy it again. <laughs> Yep, Hitler's gonna rise again. <laughs> yeah, and you, and you need to stop them. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm the only one that like sees that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it's just, yeah. And I think so. My my daughter's German, and and I can't help but think how how probably tired of these games she is, and and. Uh, if she lives in Germany, so they have to be tired of me, yeah. you know, seeing these games and the commercials for these games and stuff. So, all right. Anyway, so that was this or that. Uh, and then if if uh, if Jack were here, we'd be able to play. You're the inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> um, this week, I am. Showing you guys a young guy by the name of uh, what was his name? Uh, it's gonna ruin it. Guillermo Ramirez. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. And he's got he's got really awesome two D art. Uh, his coloring is fantastic. His his poses are great. His style is super cool. Um, but one of the things that the, the thing that actually caught my eye was this. <laughs> this is a 3D uh, a 3D piece he did of this character, and it just cracked <laughs> me up. I was rolling. Um, so if you're listening on iTunes, uh, his link obviously will be in the show notes. But if you go to Instagram.com slash R.C. Guillermo, G-U-I-L-L-E-R-M-O, you'll see what we're talking about. Um, this guy's style is awesome. His poses, which you guys know I'm just – I'm obsessed with people posing – um, especially with their artwork and stuff, showing showing people in 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 the middle of uh, of an action more than just standing there being boring. Um, so yeah, this guy's he's um, he's really cool. Uh, his work is really cool, and I like it because he only has one thousand, not even twelve hundred followers yet. Um, but his stuff is super tight and he needs more followers. 
That's he awesome. Needs more. He needs more. So there. Cool. Cool beans. Guillermo Ramirez. Yeah, that's awesome. Look at that stuff. All right. All right. You feel like going, Chuck? Yeah, I'll go. Can you see it? Cool. So I went with a guy named Clinton Crumpler. He's a senior environment artist over at the Coalition up there in Vancouver. Uh, really cool, really cool environment. I haven't done an environment guy in a while. Been doing a lot of 2D ones. So I brought one back uh, because his stuff caught my caught my eye. What caught my eye is uh, there's a really cool site for tutorials and like articles and stuff about a uh, game development called uh, Level 80. And he had an article on there about doing 360 uh, screenshots in Unreal. So he did a beautiful rendering of uh, inside of a, a subway. Um, really cool 360 uh, a shot that um, it looks just the level of detail is really nice. Love it. So it's really good. So there it is. You can kind of see that. But his other art is also amazing. Um, he's worked on Gears of War 4. Um, his laundry mat was really cool. He did. It was kind of kind of cool. It had like an eerie feel to it. Oh, you know what? One a guy at my work has this this laundry mat as his screensaver. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So that guy, he's got amazing taste. <laughs> yeah, um, I do the same thing for for my stuff at work. I, I use it as like a gallery for inspiration. Um, you know, so if I stare at good art, you know, it'll rub off in terms of like seeing little things. You know, and we we talked about it tonight in the show about you know environment has to tell a story, has to has the little things, just you know, the cigarette buds and like the different things or what the paper says, you know. Especially from from a game, from game art standpoint, you know when players are walking around your environment, you can tell a cool story about it with the stuff in it. It's awesome. So yeah, he's got some really cool stuff here, um, and it's a it's a good variety of stuff. You know, it's like a lot of realistic type of stuff, but like good variety in terms of style. You know, because um, this is kind of cool where like it's uh, more realistic in the front and the for in the, in the foreground, and then as you get to the background, it, it looks starts to look more two D. Um, so he's Taking some some cool chances with things. I mean, this was a, this was that Battle Cry actually uh, game, which was kind of like a cool little hybrid of like ink and paint and like textured uh, modeling texturing. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, so check him out. He's on Art Station, and it's uh, really cool. And he has some really gory uh, Gears of War stuff too. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> awesome. Yep. So that's his name, Clinton Crumpler. Check it out. Cool. How are how are you guys uh, sharing your? So on the left side of your screen, there's a green uh, oh, screen right. of an arrow. Click on that, and then just put the uh, your browser right in front in front of your hangout, and boom, you're good to go. Okay. Um, was it um, should I should I go or did you want to? Um... You can go. I have one, but you can. Yeah, you can go. No, why, first. why don't you go first, ladies first? I was just trying to make sure I knew what to do. Can you share, Fisa, or you want me to pull up? Huh? Can you share? share your huh? Can I share? You said you had one. Yeah, but how do I? Oh, I just pull it into the. Oh, here we go. Can you see it? Yeah. Yep. There you okay. go. Yeah, this is one one of my friends showed me. It's a lady who just takes uh, pictures and does lighting. But some of this stuff is super awesome. Like how she oh, cool. all the stuff she does to these these scenes. I mean, they're all real, but just to like take these environments and put them into like games. Yeah, this is really cool. That's neat. So she's like creatively color correcting these photos that she's yeah. taking. Yeah, and she's going to these places. Oh man. That's yeah, cool. I, mean, I think this was the first one I saw of hers that was like really cool. So what's her name? Mary Wolf. This is on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, it's on Instagram. Yeah, she was just Mary one of following Wolf. just for inspiration. Mary underscore Wolf. Yeah, that's a, that's an instant follow right there. Yeah. <laughs> these these images are really cool for like even for reference. That's like a cool. Yeah, exactly. One. Like just to get color changes and stuff like that for how you do um, stuff. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. How do yeah. I? See? So you okay. click on that same. You click on that same little uh, screen share button, and it'll bring back your. App. Uh, 
All right. It's all you, Demarcus. Okay, I was trying to um, add a couple hours, but I'll show um, my buddy. Let me uh, let's see if I do this right. He may see. Oh, okay. Uh, can you guys? You see? Yep, you're good. Mm -hmm. All right. So, first, I want to give a shout out to is a really good artist. Let me just go to the top. His name is Joe Marabello, mm. and um, Joe stuff. The thing that I find awesome about this guy is he is a um, an indie game um, you know creator. He made a game called Tower of Guns, and um, he did it all the art, all the lighting, all the programming, everything all by itself. Oh, wow. Um, and I met him as a concept artist, and this is just like some of his, like his, some of his stuff. <laughs> but it's, it's really like a, a, like a dynamic kind of feel very, uh, you know, very painterly, but just fun. Um, I was trying to find some of his, he, he, it looks like he kind of moved his stuff down from where I last remember seeing his work. So is, I, he, on our, is he on our station maybe? I, I, we should we should try that. I look. You know, like this, this is this is him. I don't want to put him on blast too much, but he's really shy. But um, <laughs> I'm gonna pull up. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me just kind of uh, let me settle on this one. But I want to show you real quick uh, Tower of Guns, which um, this dude just sat down and just was like, you know, I'm gonna make a game, and he he learned Unreal. Um, wow. Or, uh, he did it all by himself. All by his, I guess his brother did the music. You know, and <laughs> he just like oh. took a couple so years. He decided to get. He decided to get lazy and not learn how to play the piano. Okay. Yeah, was, <laughs> so this is this, yeah, it's like a first-person shooter. Can, can you guys see this video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. My brother and I made it. Yeah. So he just he like made all of the, he, like he figured out how to like make the um, explosions, all the. All this, you know, the gameplay. He's a he's a level designer too. But he just he, you know, and it's you can you can buy it on Steam. You know, it's, he took like maybe two or three years or something, and just like made a library of assets and all these different bosses. And then he's like, this year I'm modeling everything. Next year I'm gonna be scripting. The year <laughs> it, was, it was pretty ridiculous. Wow. So, yeah, it just he he's just a big inspiration to me because he's uh very creative and i wish my my mind worked like this yeah he's both sides of his brain yeah yeah yep so anyway that um he did this i remember when he's working on the loading you know the the front of it he's like what should i do here and he just sat and like modeled all this stuff and and then pan the camera around it you know. i know i'll build a city yeah i'm gonna build a whole city. Need a tower of guns yeah about <laughs> So I just want to give a plug to that guy because he's really inspirational to me and a uh, cool kid to follow. So yeah. take a look at stuff you get a chance. Good one. Yeah. Good one, guys. Good guy to follow when you want to realize that you haven't done much with your life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how do I click, click, click the, uh, the, 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 the green the green screen again? There you go. You're a pro at this, man. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you both for hanging in there. Uh, we it's got, almost uh, two here. Holy crap. <laughs> I know. I know. It's a good thing you got unlimited sick days. Uh, <laughs> I don't have that, but almost. We have a lot of PTO at my studio. <laughs> well, luckily, you're in the process. You guys are in the process of moving, so you won't you be too bad tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I just got to go in tomorrow and make sure all my stuff is ready to go. That's mm -hmm. it. And that's it. Cool. While we're here, hey, Fisa, if people are looking for you, they want to check out your work and stuff online, where can they find you? They can find me at uh, fushkadesign.com, and that's, uh, oh, no, crap. I have to write this down. <laughs> it's you know it's bad when you have to write it down. <laughs> it's f-u-s-h-c-a-design.com. Ah, okay, cool. Gotcha. Excellent. Thank you. And hey, DeMarcus, if people are looking for you, where can they find you? Right after you unmute yourself, you're mute, you're you'll muted. be able to communicate a little bit better. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, man. Oh, no. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, we see him here. Let's see. He's going to drop and drop. He's going to come in and come back out. Cool. While he does that, hey, Charlie, if people are looking for you. If you want to find me, you can find me on my website, cargocollective.com slash Charlie B. Williams. You can find me on uh, Instagram, Instagram.com slash Charlie B. W. 3. Uh, Facebook, Facebook.com slash Charlie B. W. 3. Um, check out my Pinterest page, Pinterest.com slash Charlie B. W. 3. Get in your life. Excellent. Demarcus, we got your back? No. Yeah, you're you're muted for some reason somehow. How about we do this? Hmm? How about we let everyone know if you're looking for Demarcus, you could look at demarcusworks.com. You'd be able to see this kid. It's it's ridiculous how talented he is. I don't know. Can can you fit any more game titles on the on the <laughs> games I work on? Oh my god! Nice. Um. Yeah. Yeah. His his game list is deep and strong. <laughs> <laughs> great. Great. Uh, and I am Carlos Gomez. You can find me at Coconut Justice pretty much everywhere. Just do a search. You'll find me there. And this is Sketch Zone. And you'll, we, we try to do a good job of being here every week. And if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. So then when we go live, you'll be able to participate. Participate yeah. like uh, Dave Atze. Dave Atzi was in the chat room harassing people, and yeah. so we called security and got him escorted out because that's what we do. Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember Mike or Raj's URLs or anything, so we'll get those and put we'll those on the, and put them in notes, yeah. on the uh, show notes and stuff. But, uh, oh, yeah, good. that's it for us, everyone. Yeah, keep better, Jack. See you next week. Yeah, feel better, Jack. We need sound effects. Um, <laughs> that's it. Have a good week, y'all. All right.